Liberians, register to vote for the 2023 general and presidential elections. Registration starts December 15, 2022 and ends March 17, 2023. Your vote is your voice. Be heard. Vote as if your life depends on it because it does. You have the power. Use it. Register to vote. Play your part. A message from the class reloaded with sponsorship from Africa Media. In Liberia, November 1944, a public spirited person was born. Joseph Numa Wakai from Wasanga, Foya District, Lofa County. He is a role model. He's actually my inspiration. He's also a perfect example of humility. He's a very humble person. Through that papi, the help he start giving all from this one here. I know that when he get there, he will help me. He will help the nation. you can't even get it so that what we here for let the government see to it that the poor right answer so how many back already you know back if i get uh rest i'll keep to buy 100 beds i can have 400 beds now you get store or you want to keep it in your house i get my uh continue i sell in my business is registered and i know illegal business woman so what's your final message to the government i want the government say rest on the port we talking here uh, we talking street uh, and I think a politician put money in our bed to cut a stay in the sun. So this is not no street tour. It is real that there is no rest. If rest here, you will not see the number of people that are wasting us here to get rest. No, let uh, 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 what we are can answer. Let president, we are can answer. And go to the court and put rest us. All right, thank you, sir. very strong speaking out against Mr. George Weir. Why do you think he would be the wrong person to rule this country? He was the world best. 
European best, Africa best, all the best, right? He made so much money, we are told, not the three million dollars. I stand to be corrected in this amount. But he made so much money to the extent that the United Nations looked at him and made him what? United Nations ambassador for UNICEF to donate his money to suffering children around the world. How many children in Liberia did he prioritize? Nothing. There is no George Weah Foundation. There is no Schools Academy. There is no Recreation Center. There is no public library for public school students. There is absolutely nothing. Money is gone. You want to be president to sit over our resources. The same way you manage, mismanage yours, you will man mismanage ours. That's what I think. We fear rigging. We fear rigging. And if there is a rig election, we fear national civil response. So but the people just guys welcome it's 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 um uh, it's good to see you all here um welcome george uh again to us uh, uh welcome uh daniel sando and uh, of course as usual pia it's good to see you all gentlemen uh welcome to class guys how is it uh how was the uh the weekend let a man from miami tell us what's happening in miami <laughs> how was the weekend uh, uh daniel <laughs> well not 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 nothing much we just been trying to put ourselves together for the new week. As you know, Monday is usually tense, except that the legislature is on break now, but for the office that we will occupy, we have to go to work. Even the legislature is on break. So yes, I, the weekend was not bad. The fact that we are grateful to be alive and well. And today is Monday, we're back here to do the people's job. I've been out of this platform for quite a while now, and I'm happy to be back here. I'd like to say thank you to you, Lobo, and Pia, and every member of our team for the work you continue to do to keep up the platform. And I'm wondering, I'm wondering why. You, you just said you've been on the class for a while, and I'm thinking, why? Why did it happen that way? <laughs> yeah, you already, you already know why, why I've been on the platform for a while now. So, I mean, what I, what I, what, what, the reason for which I've been out of here doesn't matter. What matters most is my presence here to be able to, to live up to our commitment that we made to the public because I know that uh, today is, interestingly, today is October 10th. So we let's, have a little, a little, a little we start with a show with disagreement because I don't, I don't agree that the reason of, for which you are not here doesn't matter. No, I don't think so. Well, you, I mean, we yeah, have, you know, we always a, we can, we can, have we can always, we always we agree and disagree. We have an obligation to keep the platform alive. Of and course, if one of those who's supposed to keep it alive is not there, and then he's telling us uh, he's not being here, doesn't matter. No, I, I disagree. No, I said what matters is my presence here. The reason for which I was not here can, I mean, maybe yeah. it's private reason. I can explain. Yeah, your but, presence I mean, here, your, your presence here matters as much as your absence. 
We have to make we have to make our individual <laughs> Yes. Uh, let me let me you know it's good to see uh, Daniel and we hope that uh, we can solve the <laughs> the challenge with you not being regular. Uh, hopefully we can get that resolved. Let me welcome um, all of our folks. I see uh, Cornelius Hunter. I see Fanny Civil, uh, Willie Cowboy, Fanny, Neil Simon, um, Ralph Liwasa, George Shelton, Alex Jackson, Gabriel Dennis, Alex Mensa, Ali Gray, Richard Colley, Manston Boy, um, Mapu Hoy. I see a lot of our folks um, in the in the comment session. I would like to welcome all of you to class. <laughs> I see Emmanuel Jones. Uh, I'd like to welcome all of you to class. Uh, I see my friend uh, Tom Benson, uh, Samuel Hollywood, uh, Jiba Telewania, Basi Morris. You know, everybody, man. If I if we call him the roll call, yeah, yeah, we for. If we call him everybody, uh, Samuel Roberts, uh, my own big brother from the university, back in the day, PK Topa, as it doesn't. So we'd like to welcome all of you, you know, Daniel Zahu, Carlos Willie, and everybody to class. We have a breaking news for the class um today we have a breaking news and 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 that breaking news is um on the 19th of october which is next week wednesday um joseph walker will be here in class with us so um ambassador former vice president joseph walker will be will, will be joining us in class next wednesday um there will be flyers that we will share uh in the course of the week um and, and and hopefully um everybody can come to class we can uh have as many per persons as we want you know to to to, to watch the show across different media outlets and uh we might do summer chaos but maybe cost time other people to show that we can get more more people to reach so wednesday of next week october 19 jmb will be in class so uh you can mark your calendar down and you won't miss class that day, my people, for anything. Mind your calendar down, get your copy book, your pencil, your pen, and make sure you come to class next week, Wednesday. Uh, 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 GMB will be here. So let me say, um, um, how up to our radio station, Bushwell Radio FM 98.1, Shakta FM 102.5 in Montserrat, both of them. Radio Tupac, all the way there in Grand Passa, 89.1. Uh, Voice of Lofa 99.3 in Vojima Radio Joy Africa FM 97.5 in Magibi Voice of Compa 106.5 in Nimba Puto Radio FM 102.3 all the way there. So, uh, next week, Wednesday, as we said, next week, Wednesday, JMB will be here in class. So, uh, you don't want to miss it for anything. Uh, that would be one of the uh, and then following that, we will bring um, Senator Yombli Kanga Lawrence on also. So, hopefully, the that next Monday after JMB appeared, we'll bring Senator Kanga Lawrence. Because um, today is exactly one year to election day. Exactly 365 days to election day. Uh, so to, 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 to be on the safe side before you go further, we're not just bring Senator Nyomli Kanga Lawrence. We'll bring other forces who are in the edge Yeah, we'll bring uh, uh, of the, of the, of the, yeah, uh, the, the Joe Walker uh, movement. We'll bring Mr. Yuri. We'll bring... Yeah. Uh, Alari Tupa and his folks yeah. from the DA and, and, and all of that. Alari been here before. Jada is not in that capacity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll yeah. try to get him we'll back. I'll reach out to him. So we'll bring the long list. We'll try to get our own uh, veteran, Duba Yang. Once, he, once he's back, I'll try to get him to come on because... Uh, so yeah, guys, Ezekiel, welcome. Ezekiel, Pajibu, and all of them. All of yeah, them. I, to, uh, I, will, I will log on to my own account and, and reach out to Ezekiel because... Um, He's way out there in Johannesburg. I need to, to get in touch with him. I see our man, uh, uh, Jerry Nima Yimpa, the Portokan governor. <laughs> uh, the guy, the South Korean boy. The South <laughs> Korean boy. I, I, was talking to the, I was talking to the man last time, my man, the man says since they took our two citizens in uh, Comunicado in an isolated place, uh, they're just there. And, oh, yeah. And, and so and I, asked him, I, I asked him, yeah. what, what next? He said, well, they remain in that unknown place until their code appearance and that's sad yeah it's solitary confinement wow. and, and and the librarian yeah. will not say a word up to that i don't think any uh, he, he, he he told me he told me that one of the things they've heard from the corridor there is that you know the, the issue is very sensitive um the guys 
who are involved, they've been hoping that the government will plead diplomatic immunity on their behalf. But you and I know that it, 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 will, it will appear insensitive, especially something that has to do with grace yeah, and, you know, and rape for you to be pleading immunity. So, I, I mean, he said what they're hearing is that they're basically trying to find legal counsel for to represent them in court rather than saying they have diplomatic immunity. And and which which I think makes sense because so, so you see you, you see what uh, uh patients saying down there is she say what JB can everybody more wear more wear suit. <laughs> no but uh, uh, uh I mean I, I don't disagree with her. We yeah, we, we, okay, got, we got we gotta we gotta show JMB some level of respect. My man Lobo always in quote anyway so yeah. for him yeah, that we the catch up man, and we the one that we, we the one patient talking to. You no, woke up for twelve years, PR, uh, so I can't blame you. Brother Samuel, Samuel Sakama, I see Terence. Uh, patient, patient, we hear you. Yeah, my old brother Terence, that way there, all the way up there from Monrovia. Like, welcome, guys. Um, so you know, um, yeah, like, well, the big news is uh, JMB will be on the class reloaded next Wednesday. So, uh, your please, I see my own brother Richard Colley there. Your your um, your mark your calendar down. Um, because it wouldn't be easy next Wednesday will be hot to be in class with the with the next president of Liberia. So guys, you know, um it's good to be back. Uh we'd like to you know roll the show with as usual what's trending. Um today we'll talk a lot of trending issues. Um uh, um uh, each of you will talk about it. We will one subject will talk about it, you know, and then then the next person raises the uh the second trending issue we all will will charming on it. So um, without much ado, uh, let uh, me begin. Uh, uh, I understand from you, Stephen, that everybody in the training issue been there today, including our 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 followers, right? Our students. Yeah. Because we don't have a special segment today after the trending issue. We give them a chance to have enough time to call and raise all their own trending issues they have. Yeah. Because we can it, it can really be like the, the last show we had, Stephen. When the show ended, I tried to review my call list. Almost 50 persons call. How many wow. of them were I able to get on? I don't think even reach it. So uh, since it's all trending issue today, after our trending issue, when we, when we open the line, we hope we can keep it all long. And it's good that Daniel is here. I hope you will stay on so we can have people calling a number from Liberia because calling us from the US through WhatsApp doesn't allow many of the people on the ground to go through as we anticipate. So let's hope that since trending issue is the order of the day today and Daniel is here, I hope that enough of them and enough of our people in the diaspora. I mean, the diaspora people too, even though sometimes we argue. Yeah, they say, yeah, we argue. They say, oh, they put in Liberia, this, that. But yeah, when people are busy hustling, when a man can leave his normal hustle and can't sit down watching you on show and he wants to call and he can't get it, that discourages him and that how you lost followership. So we gotta, we gotta find a balance between the two. Yeah, 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 we'll do that. Going you know, hopefully, and I think uh, Daniel has a better internet quality today. So hopefully we can get that going. So yeah, yeah um, I didn't know again. Pack, what's, again what's package, done with training yeah, is we 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 yeah laugh from our that chief of staff yeah package now. We yeah laugh from our. Uh, <laughs> 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 well, yeah laugh from our listeners. Yeah, today he's the one who pointed on the one on the show regularly. <laughs> but man, uh, uh, why did John Lobo? I see everybody telling you welcome back, welcome back. You know that that uh, I don't know that seven week training you got to. <laughs> Oh, as a matter of fact, Steve, it's not even seven, it's 11 weeks. Uh, you know, how, about, how many we got now? 11 weeks, and I think I, this is my third week, Steve. Start on the 26th. So, so minus three October. from 11? <laughs> I know, my, my man. <laughs> well, like no, what that, what that, what that shows is that the, the, for our followers, they, they, they appreciate and admire George. They want to see George engaged. So, even in a short time, the three weeks, already missing the conversation. So, yeah. So we got to find a way to get George more engaged, even with all the busy schedule. That's the sacrifice we have to make for JMB in Liberia. Uh, and you, 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 all, you all know, Stephen, for me, I've always been very clear about this. It's not about some of us personally. It's about yeah. uh, providing the information to our people. And like I said, the decision is going to be theirs. We'll go to Liberia some of us. If we mean we'll have to resign from the jobs. Imagine 11 weeks of training, Steve, and you'll do the job, and then we'll have to say you'll resign to go to Liberia for for something that is me. I, I, I don't I know how much more. You know, when people ask me about sacrifice, sometimes I ask them, oh, just <clears> think <throat> about the number of hours for the past six months, just so you know. You know what? I, I could not work because I was working a split shift, just trying to make the draft available to the people. 
So every week I was losing 12 hours of work. That's wow. income. Then Man, I 20, pay, uh, you know, 2017, I quit. I quit and and then job. I have to pay. Yeah, then I pay for the phone that I get used for people to call in with Verizon. And then I pay for the cloud for the, the stream yard. So not only that I'm losing income, I'm not making enough, but I'm still spending more. So sometimes, you know, when people talk about what are you doing for your country, what have you done? We, we all can't carry yellow machines to great uh, roles in Liberia. But this commitment we make to the people, I mean, it's for the sake of the country. And I mean, I'm glad. I want to thank our people. We'll do what we can to always be here to provide the yeah. information whenever I'm available. Steven knows that I always communicate that. And I'm excited to be here today. So looking forward to these conversations. And let's so let, 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 begin the, uh, let begin the conversation. And it's good that it's here because there are a lot of issues turning in the Liberty Party. And I, um, and before, before you start, Stephen, I can see that all gloves are out because I think GMB now is on the is on the move, uh, moving from district to district. Now, see, before he comes on our show on the twelfth, he will be on the Truth Breakfast show. Yeah, so, he will be on the Truth Breakfast show. Yeah, on the that's, that's, that's what we want to see happening. Keep engaging, going to the communities. But there was some the, 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 the media institutions, even the ones that say they oppose to you, engage them head on and, and, and subdue them. That's what we want. Because so, yeah, there's a video. Do you remember when GMB had that engagement with the media after the, the, the event? I haven't seen it. Well, he was talking about agriculture and how he's the nobody in the race, understand? Like, I haven't oh, 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 yeah. Yeah, I play that saw, video, Steven. It's important. Yeah, let me play. Let me play. I saw that. I saw that. I saw that. Yes. The corporation that changed the lives of the whole country. I mean, all over this country, several times. I serve as Minister of Agriculture, and you are told that. They used to have the statistic that 70% of this country is agricultural. I serve with a Liberia refining company. All the people boast about corporate entity in America. You cannot rule people that you don't know. People think that America will elect you. No way. You serve the people. And this is that the meaning that the people we have served. I know them. I know they are thinking. I work with them. I did not be in for the war. When I was <coughs> minister of culture, Lofa Bon Nimba would have been transformed into an agricultural district that would improve the life of people. If agriculture fails under my regime, you can hold it because I'm the only one who has served as managed, I mean, at, a, at the farm level. LPMC as managing director at the export level, as policy level, nobody else in this country. All the institutions that support agriculture and you and I work with them. So I'm not a stranger to this country. Nobody else will boast of that, I can tell you. So you 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 know you listen to him, I think he was very tough talking. Uh, 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 yeah, he's talking about nobody in the whole race can, when it comes to agriculture, can can say anything because he went through the from the basement of the of the agriculture pyramid all the way to the top, uh, uh, and that uh, you cannot lead anybody if you don't know them, and and and, and, and that's key. That's one of the very key things in politics that you have to have a national appeal for you to be taken seriously as a politician. There has to be a local connect between you. And those who intend to lead in the absence of that, but better you cannot use money to 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 he, to he he made a very strong point. Those of us who were who were grown before the war, we knew the impact of the different uh, BC, uh, uh, GP BCAD, program, LC, yeah. DP, uh, BCADP, and our DP. Yeah, those were very strong, strong uh programs that were enhancing the country's agricultural productivity. And the point he's making is that he was involved with all of those things in different capacities. He had the FPNC, uh, which was linked to the agriculture sector. He was agriculture minister. He even talked about how he came down from the level of some director and other things, you know, yeah. growing through the ranks and fire and, and staying longer time in the agricultural sector. So he, he, he understands the sector, and that's the point he's making. And the truth that you and I know, we can't depend on the attractive industry, the real beacon of hope. For economic viability in Liberia is the agricultural sector. Exactly. So if you have a president who understands that sector, and I know the 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 people who are on the other side will be quick to jump on the fact that he was vice president, but you and I know even the great America we're in, 
the vice president is a nominal position. You're not in charge. Yes, you're part of a team, but you're not in charge. It is different from uh, being president. Oh, you yeah, if you are President Bwaka, it's not the same as being vice president Bwaka. Uh, Kamala, Kamala Harry right now is vice president. Kamala Harry. But we saw with right? Trump. Uh, yeah. yeah. I'm taking, I'm taking even, even, even Joe Biden, who's here, Joe Biden was, was vice president under Obama. But now he's president Obama, uh, President Biden. And you see differences in, in the way things have been approved. And like you said, Tobo. Yeah. Tobo was just sitting there. Nobody knew where he was until when Tobo went down, Tobo came over. And all of us, most of us, even though he was killed, but many of us who saw his leadership who were around, we agreed that he was a progressive leader. Very progressive leader. Even though he was vice president for 19 years. Yeah, we started uh, to transform the country. So Stevie, I, I want to bring I want to bring something to the public attention. A uh, few things that caught my attention in that interview. Uh one of the reasons I've always argued when it comes to who should become president is that everywhere in the world, people seek experience. This is a public service job. And it's unfortunate that we, we are having these discussions. We have a competent, qualified, overqualified candidate for this job. And the notion that people want us to see reason to leave him and even entertain the discussion of setting other candidates, it makes no sense to me. But on the issue of agriculture, PLO, if you look at GMB four letter words, A R T S, agriculture is the bare rock fundamental argument we've made. We've argued that we know that in order for us to be able to expand the library economy, for us to create jobs, low skills jobs, we've said that we must diversify the library economy through agriculture. And not just agriculture, but he says something that people don't, don't look at. He has argued over and over that we need marketers farming. We need to be able to provide the technical assistance to our people. We also need to be able to provide the corridors so that their food gets to farm the, the, from the produce from the from the farms to the market. And you know, like I always say, Stevie, earlier before we came on, I had asked you to find a sedition. And I know it's one of the greatest difficult jobs you will have finding someone to come to have these conversations. And they are very fortunate to have these platforms that provide no substance where they go and carry these talking points. I want us to have these conversations with people who can come here and say, you know what, I will go to the class reloaded. I want to go there and, and engage those folks because the CDC government, this is what we have done so well. Not writing and this and that. But again, PR, you're absolutely correct. Agriculture provides us some of the opportunity for us to expand the economy and create jobs. And, and Joseph Numa Boakai could not have said it any better. He is the right man, Stephen. He, he also, you know, he said on policy level. And in addition to that, just to, to, to support his argument, Siri Allen said on Spoon, that doing Boakata and NRDP, NCRDP, the agriculture sector did well. That in itself is a confirmation of what the former vice president have been saying, that I left LPMC with a $50 million turnover. Imagine those days, $50 million contribution to the budget. Today we have LEC can barely even raise $10 million, yet they are depending on the government. So I look forward to these engagements because- Yeah, you know, yeah, it's, it's important and I, and I you know, um looking at like bureau and and, and 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 the way you know gmb has has put for his acts agenda it tells you straight because you know once you when you talk about agriculture and you talk about roads uh, uh uh then you talk about tourism then you talk about sanitation what you essentially doing is that you're building now a country where you you pushing people into becoming middle class citizen because when when agriculture is booming you have roads, your tourism sector starts to boom. Yeah. Besides job, you know, you, you, you're creating opportunity. You talk about sanitation, you, 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 you know, you're promoting a healthy environment, but at the same time, creating opportunity for people. And that's why the Chinese will say uh, in, the, in the Chinese philosophy is that the road to development begins with the development of roads. So yeah. you're talking yeah. agriculture, you're talking roads. Obviously, you that's the niche to moving any country forward. But, you Daniel, know, Daniel, out, yeah. Daniel, you're quiet on this issue. Very but, 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 Stevie, issue. But Stevie, just before, just before you proceed to our, the next talking point, it is important to know that we're having this conversation at a time when the country is experiencing a looming risk crisis. And I, when I listened to the interview from Ambassador Boyka, I, I had thought that 
the unity party and people like oh who support ambassador Baga must give this this interview more publicity because many Liberians need to hear his own agenda as to how he intend to transform the agro sector for me I've listened to many politicians talk about what they want to do and everything I believe in judging people by their track record and that's the reason why I have no doubt that Ambassador Boga can be the best president for Liberia because he has a track record of transforming a particular sector, which for me is a gateway to our, our national development. We need to grow our economy. Even if you have a president who says he will come to fight corruption at what level, if you cannot grow this economy, wherein you graduate your population to developing a middle class, you cannot make any progress. Okay, so listening to Ambassador Boga talk about how he intends to transform the agro sector and what he can do, and even to the point where he said nobody can do this more than more than yeah, breaking rights. You know, I think it was very important. That was a very important point because look at this corner today. The U.S. embassy put up uh, a post on a social media page about food insecurity, right? They link it to the looming rice crisis in Liberia, and what can the government do to address it today? The civilian are rejoicing because one put one punch ship around the pole, the king will rest. We can't run this country like this, okay? There are global implications of being of, of, of not being reliant in terms of national staple. So as a government, we have to be able to say, look, yes, how we can address this problem. And that's what Joseph Baka is saying now. Make me president. I'm going to transform the agro sector. We can be able to feed ourselves. Why? Because I have a track record in this particular area. And that track record of success is something that I bring in. Come on. Come on our experience. Come on the success story in our sector. Make him president. And thank for this, all he said, give me three years. If I can't transform this sector, I mean, you can pass a vote of no confidence in my government. Mm -hmm. I think that's a good bet for Liberians. He you said, know? ask me to resign. Of course. Not even of exactly. Course. Said, that's, the extent of which, that's the extent of which he's committed about what he said. Because, look, the blueprints are available. The only reason why this country is not self-sufficient in terms of feeding itself is because the government has not placed much priority no emphasis has been played. When you read the government purple agenda for development, it talks nothing about, about, about diversifying the agro sector. Nothing else is included. Okay, so I think it's about time that we just move from the regular you know, campaign promises and begin to come on the track record of these people. Because I mean, moving to the 2023 elections, Mr. We cannot tell Liberia that he can transform the agro sector. As far as we're concerned, he has five years on I mean at his disposal, he done very little. To yeah. invest in the agro sector okay so we're now looking at someone like ambassador Baka who said look i've been there before i did this thing yeah it's my record i want you to give me another opportunity so i think Liberian, Liberians, i mean i mean for all for all for all point of view have a very good opportunity to make to remake this country for themselves with ambassador Baka on the ballot i think we can have a president who can take meaningful steps to transform key sector, talk about the tourism industry that he mentioned in the act, the tourism industry, sanitation, for example. What has the government done to address it? These are sectors that have been abandoned, and that Mr. Braga is putting is placing emphasis on this area. Speaks to the fact that he has been following with key interests. He, I mean, he has he has he has read extensively in the areas, and that's why he has incorporated all of these things into his platform called the act, the agriculture. The tourism, the role, the sanitation, I think that like, they in advance with such an agenda. Yeah, you know, and, and, and it's good, Daniel. So, but you know, we ha we'll have JMB here on next Wednesday um, to talk more in detail about about all of these things and, 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 and you know, drill us through his time in government, his vision for Liberia, um, his plans, and where he wants to see the country go. You know, we just thought that we should just talk about that video and just each of us can just throw a light on it. This is, you know, um, the, in much more detail, we'll speak about it in much more detail um, next week, Wednesday, when we have GMB. Now, let's begin with you, uh, Pia. Then, um, there, there, was a, there was a convention held last week uh, with the MPP. Uh, we know that convention ended in chaos. Um, we we've been told, and it is uh, that uh, somebody died. A guy, one of the stalwarts, died. Um, uh, we'd like to extend our deepest condolences to his family. He fell off at the convention hall, and uh, later was pronounced dead um, upon arrival at the hospital. Um, 
but but this 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 MPP, you know, um, when you listen to, and, and uh, let me just say this, that uh, long before the coalition for democratic change came came to power, the MPP were already on life support. When you we know this, the MPP was on life support. In 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 1997, the MPP won by over 78 percent of the vote and state counting. Uh, by 2005. By 2005, it's the same very MPP could not pull even up to 2% of the vote. Worse off, by 2011, the MPP could not even pull a percent of the vote. Uh, 2023, 2017, she, she morphed into this coalition. Uh, and we all know what happened in 2023, election one. And, the, you know, and then I listened, uh, you guys talk about surrealing things that they're so vibrant. A man who could not even win a district seat in in Kakata, uh, uh now thinks that this is a vibrant ent entity and that this government is performing. Pia, uh, take us there. What 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 have you to say about the? Siri Ali, Siri Ali is a good talker, and, and and most of the time when I listen to this guy speaking, I I'm inclined to just conclude that his 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 talking is substance induced. That's 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 what I see him to be, because he doesn't sound normal. Right, he sounds like somebody who's taking something far stronger than maybe cocaine or stronger than by you call, as we call it in, in our Liberian parlance. It, it, it doesn't sound normal. So, forget about what he feels about the MPP. You put it right, the MPP feels in real terms to exist since state or left. In fact, the what is today the CDC itself? I'm not talking about the Coalition for Democratic Change. I'm talking about Congress for Democratic Change has been a, 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 a retirement ground for people who used to call themselves. Uh, nah, let me not say retirement, but it's been a new home for people who used to be referred to as seditions, right? I mean, as MPP people. So it didn't come as a surprise to me that when they said they were forming a coalition, that's where they went. It was just meant to reassure their people who joined them just by name because the two parties that the CDC went into the collaboration with they didn't have anything substantive to offer in terms of followers or membership. So MPP is nothing. They, 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 for them, what is unfolding now gave some relevant relevance to them because then people talking about them, then they're in the news. The, the, the newspapers on the radio, people talking MPP, MPP. Even though for the wrong reason, the thing, but that way people still get to know that they are still around and they are okay. But what is concerning to me about what is happening in the MPP is we have a vice president who, of course, is supposed to be a government official uh, with part of their key responsibility being as a government being to maintain law and order, being a lawless person herself. Because if you go to a convention, grand say, for example, the United Party going to Grand Basel, they say they want to have a convention, and they ask for the fair ground, and the fair ground is officially the convention hall, and while delegates are inside the fair ground doing convention business, say some hooligans or breakaways come outside of the convention hall, and decide to conduct a parallel convention uh, outside of, 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 of the framework of their own constitution, elect officers there who they know are not officers while the real convention is going on in the house. That's nothing but lawlessness, that's nothing but hooliganism, and for the country sitting vice, vice president to be the one spearheading such act of lawlessness and hooliganism. That, that's the reason why we shouldn't get surprised if we see the government itself being as lawless as it is. They've not respected the constitution since they came to power. They're not, they're not a good friend to, to law and order. That's the reason why you could see public officials involved with the current government, you know, mobilizing ex-fighters openly to harm other people, to go after opposition. And it took just the government of the United States to publicly say that and try to punish some of the actors who were responsible in this case, Nathana Maguire, who was specifically accused of putting these ex war laws together. But besides Maguire, who was doing that, you and I know that every time government security operation going on somewhere, you see general power there, right? Is that, is, is that, is that, a, is that part of any government security apparatus? 
for we dear them, they, they look part of any government security apparatus, but that's what the government believed in. And, and, and the government is, 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 um, is enhanced because of the kind of mixture they found themselves in, deciding to work with these MPP people, uh, people who spearheaded war. I know some people don't like to hear this. I don't have time for that. Spearheaded war, a war that killed 250,000 people, and the thing is okay. If it was in a place like Sierra Leone, right? Somebody like Siri Allen would not have a voice to be talking. People who were in similar category as Siri Allen in Sierra Leone, they, 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 if they're still existing, they're in communicado, self, self imposed communicado. They don't, get, they don't get to interfere in anything like that based on the crimes they committed against Sierra Leone as a country, the people of Sierra Leone. But because Liberia, we have refused to hold people accountable. We're talking every, every now and then about this war and economic crimes, quote. So the likes of Syria Ali and others who were part and parcel of the mayhem in our country, they still see themselves as some important people who should be a critical part of the political discourse. And they can get out and, 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 and trash talk people. I am not even talking about uh, politicians rather than fighting to Joe Baca and others instead of fighting to be in power, they should be building factories. Having a factories, Mr. Taylor and his MPFL slash MPP bill before Taylor was elected president. Having a factories. The CDC he's working with today for the 12 years of staying in opposition. Having a factory to build. Is that the work of the opposition? If an opposition element got money and they want to do business, for example, say Senior Freeman, he's a politician. He got a personal money. He wants to do business. He's doing GSTV business. It's a choice. But where you, where, and, and, and a single Freeman in that case who is doing his business and not movement for progressive change. It is a business that benefits him. That's how he talk to expand his money. So what Simi Allen got this idea from that rather than fighting to say they want to be president, people supposed to be building factories and, and doing this for the people when he didn't do it. Or only now that is an issue. So it, it, it is the likes of Siri Allen being associated with the, the, the current CDC that made matter work. CDC itself have been a kind of hooliganistic group before, toting casket all over the place, noted for violent protests and all of that. Their matter just got worse from the time they decided to collaborate with these MPP people, including people like Siri Allen and others, who are lawless people, who committed crimes against our country, who are not being held accountable, and therefore they have the guts to open their mouths and, and, and the substance induced miles and talk to people like Waka and other actors in the opposition community. That, that, that's, my, that's my initial talk. And, and nobody will do anything to anybody. And every day they are killing each other in that place. The fact that the vice president was the chief instigator, the fact that she was the instigator in chief, is a story dead upon the rival. Even Banning and crying all over the place, even something happened to any of them, and the chief instigator is Joy Howard Taylor, just consider your zero situation. Because they are lawless. That's the society they want, that's the society they are giving us. You know, and the follow up, follow their example. If I was supposed to be a sedition and I see my vice president, my vice senior bearer, being that law that's not for the first time, they were not her first time. I think it was her third time. What does it tell, tell me? I'm supposed to be anybody who's going to be disciplined and respect law and order. But my leader is, is, is spearheading lawlessness. That is it. I think you muted, Stevie. Let go to church, yeah. Thank you, Pia. Let go to church. And before I go to church, let me just say this. I remember um when we were at the university, um, Pia, um, Siri Allen had come there. They was doing the heat day of the of the war. He had come there with this with this silly, silly thoughts, silly thought about how university students should should join the government forces and, and they will be conscripted into militants and go fight for their country. You know, and, and, and I remember us, we 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 we, we attacked him. We almost we almost ransack his vehicle. They had a security guy had to had to race him off campus. Our exact word to him was what bring your children, let them can go fight for for the government. You 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 chairman for the, the ruling party, you 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 in the government, you come on university campus to come mobilize students to go fight fight for what? That that guy has long time still that country you coming to the job, but that guy has been a long time on serial hulum. And, and the guy sat on that show and he was telling, telling Dr. Richardson that he had openly criticized Taylor and told Taylor Taylor government was corrupt. 
And Richardson decided to take him on about the current government, and he did not have the balls, he did not have the chest to say that the current government is corrupt. He kept resisting that. I didn't say that. You want to put war in my mouth? Don't be confrontational. Because I can be more confrontational. He was, he was that misbehaving. And to my surprise, the, the, chief, the, chief, the chief lead of that show was even facilitating and encouraging him to even dis disrespect his own panelists. You know? And if Taylor government, who the sanction for stealing? The sanction for opening the government for stealing. This guy fell short of saying this government is corrupt. Exactly. You are knocking your chest and say he told Taylor that Taylor government was corrupt. So he's a hoodlum. He's a hooligan. He's a vampire. He's a Dracula. He talks before he thinks. He just a loose talker, open your mouth, and walk, jump out, and he just says that. Garbage. In and out. Thank you. Thank you. Let me judge. I saw you did a post. Uh, 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 I did a post for multiple reasons. I know it has been misconstrued, uh, especially for my friends on the ANC side. Everything George Lobo writes is, is a campaign tool for them. So they have posts out, with, out of it. But let me tell you what I think. Uh, Senator Joel Howard Taylor, here's what breaks my heart. Uh, they often say if you educate a girl child, you educate a nation because they believe that the female cares about people she cares about family and this mother uh who happens to be the vice president who is the former senior senator for bond county where i was born uh has has not disappointed me in any shape size or form uh joel has shown over the years to be a heartless careless irresponsible mother and i i, I do not apologize i do not miss my words this is a mother who went to Bond County from the genesis of the regime and said to our people that it was our time that you must be a regime good liquor for you to be employed on the basis of that argument. We will see people in Bond County, local officials across the country, professional career people being dismissed because of those statements. That for you to stay in your position, you must now go to the shrine, and begin to worship the CDC. This is who she has been. This is a mother who comes from Bond County. During the days of her husband as rebel leader, Phoebe never went out of electricity because I lived there. Under her leadership as vice president, with a 500 and with a 600 plus million dollar budget, Phoebe Hospital, five of her citizens would die because of lack of electricity. The administrator there would say, we can no longer perform surgery because people are dying due to the lack of electricity. Yet she's the vice president of the country. So how much more can you ask for this lady? This is the vice president. On a whole leadership, the regime elected by the people to provide one of the cardinal responsibilities of the government is to protect its citizens. And the issue of the rule of law, this has been an ongoing thing when it comes to this government. The fact that people will gather and she will bring in people to say she will hold her own convention outside of the Supreme Court's ruling, which recognized Barney as the chairman of the party who has the constitutional authority to organize a convention. That tells me that, you see, when we when we question the Louis Arthur Grand School of Law, Stephen you get mad at us. But to be honest, I think we need to close UL down for three good years. There needs to be serious reform at the Universal Library because the output that the society is getting from the UL is not shown. My, one of my men said the other day, it has a net negative impact, which is bad. This is a lawyer, Joel Howard Taylor. The Supreme Court rule that the party chairman is the one who holds the authority to organize convention. And this lawyer who is the vice president will go there, will exercise this high level of gangsterism, bringing hooligans, will bring in her own delegates to circumvent the people's convention because she's afraid that she may not get her way. She may not get her wishes. What this speaks to, Stephen, the Liberian people must understand. You cannot continue to lower the standard. You cannot continue to say your country is an experimental lab. Since we elected George Ria, 
everything we have seen after the election of Joshua, on professionalism at the highest level, on ethical practices at the higher level, poor performance in government at the highest level. Everything has turned bad. Our people need to understand what is at stake. For me, I don't care what the MPP will do or has done. The MPP, like you said, Stevie, was on life support. Many exactly. people don't know my root in the MPP. I, if I was born in Banga and I grew up at Phoebe, my dad fathers were stewards of the MPP. My dad father were the late D. Mosley Cooper there, the, 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 the Edwin Holder there, the Roland Massacre there. My dad at one point in time was LPMC manager for Charles Taylor. But Stevie, in 2005, I looked my uncle Roland Massacre in the face. And I told him, I cannot support you because I don't like the MPP. I was in Kokopa when my dad was manager, Stevie, and they brought the MPP campaign T-shirts. I still refuse. And you know me, Stevie, from the bypass in 2005. I was with Lab. I didn't support party because of our family affiliation. So for me, for me, I don't care about the MPP. I strongly believe that when Chancellor was given the opportunity by Liberians, to have transformed the livelihood of our people, to build rapport and put his people first. Instead, he began to melt in other countries' business, and it brought serious problems for us. It brought increasing hardship on the Liberian people. And because of that, I have chosen not to forgive Chancellor. And anything affiliated with the MPP, I put all of them in that same box. But here's what PR spoke to that was very interesting. And here's why I wrote the post for some of you Liberians, because Liberians do not think outside of the box. And let me help you today. I wrote a post about what transpired on Spoon with Siri Allen's statement. Number one thing that happened, Siri Allen was very contradictory in his, all his analysis. The man argued on what government should be doing, yet then he's supporting a government that is yet to do anything he said government should be doing. This man said he told Chancellor his government was corrupt, but you have a government that you support that you're proud to say you'll be on the campaign trail for, where three of its key government officials have been sanctioned as a result of corruption, but you could not say the government was corrupt. And the reason why I wrote that post was to say, people who are in this business of being talk show hosts, journalists, you people have a responsibility and an obligation to the community to provide information, to hold public officials accountable. But yesterday, what I saw from that interview, it was a display of gross ignorance Forget about his disrespect for Dr. Richardson. That is another conversation. But to be honest, both Dr. Richardson and Stanton Witherspoon had no understanding of any serious national issues. Not for once could any of them tell Siri Ali that you were the party chairman of a government who was accused of rampant corruption, gun running, and diamond smuggling, who had none of them knew any of those things. So Siri Ali went to Sarah Lou committed atrocities. Yeah, who is now in jail because of his involvement in other people's country. And Siri Ali sat there, Stevie. It's like Siri Ali was having coffee break with the guys, with the people on spoon. And that was an embarrassment because if you are going to be a talk show host, one, you should inform yourself. You should know what you're talking about. Siri Ali, the very first thing, the fundamental question that should have been asked. No one could ask Siri Ali questions. Siri Ali, you support President Weir. You say you want to support a re-election bill. Siri Ali lied that he support President Weir because he formed a political party. He kept stability in the country. They're asking, how did he keep the country stable? All we saw every day was protests with caskets, with women underwear. Is that your form? Is that your understanding of stability? But the guys could not ask this question. And again, I don't blame anybody. You Liberian people. Forget about what they will say. You're going to hear a lot. You're going to see a lot. But you yourself now should start thinking, folks. The few more months you have to election, you have to start asking yourself these questions. Is this what I want to put up with? Is this what I'm going to be dealing with for the next six years? Is this the type of future I want for my children? And on the basis of that, Stevie, I will stop there and say, Joe and Howard Taylor have just shown exactly what was done to uh, Cornelia Crying District number 13, what was done to Taylor U.A. District number 15, the act of violence disrespect for the rule of law. It continues, just how they removed Justice Johnny, which Joel Howard Taylor, if she had respect for the rule of law, knowing that the Supreme Court ruled that Barney is the chairman, she should not have done that. But again, 
That is a mother. And this is this is why when people argue that we need more female and want to use Joelle's name as a justification for that, I find it to be so disheartening, this disingenuous. I pass you. it on to you, Daniel. Thank you. You know, yeah, yeah. Let me hear for you, Daniel. You know, a cook, a cook like Siri will will uh will think that they have a strong say in our national conversation. And George, you struck a very important point. Uh, um, I, I'm not a journalist. I, I don't profess to be one. But as, as people who come on these uh, platforms to talk to our people, uh, one of the, the your primary responsibility is to be able to at least have an appreciable level of understanding of the issues so that when you engage um, um, opinion leader, politician, uh, just talk about the issue you can have a first-hand understanding and and, 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 and and most of the time people want to use this amateur way of uh, of thinking that because they're a Liberian and because they they have a platform it, it, it morphs into saying that they understand the issue and 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 and, 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 and worse off is that ahead of your show you don't prepare um, uh, uh, in this business I spent hours before I even you know George I really I send you the whole uh, um, talking point about how we guide the show and all the things that we, we made research so that by the time you come, you can have a clear understanding and how to can be prepared to be able to engage you guys in, 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 in more of a dialogue than it being a monologue. And so, you know, we have a responsibility to our listeners and, and the readership to be able to to have understanding about the news. And then the worst of it is that most of the guys don't even allow the, the, the audience to participate, you know, to talk on the show and engage these people. And so it's just like a, a monologue with, with one person on one hand who is believed to have the issue and then, you know, somebody who's supposed to be asking the question but has no understanding about the librarian political or terrain. Yeah, let me come to you, Daniel. Daniel, what's your take on this? Then we'll move to your to your Liberty well, Party issue. With, uh, I saw a statement issued by um, um, press relief by Musa Bility saying that the Liberty Party is... Uh, is accepting uh, uh, application for aspirants ahead of 2023. So, you know, talk about this, you anything, then you can just jive you know, into that little they, thing. And then. They, both, they both speakers before me have said very important things, which I think I contribute to. But what, what I want the public to know is that the likes of C.V. Allen are the remnants of the failed political order of Liberia. You know, it, it, Mr. Mr. Ali and I went down the road before, and I, I reminded him that when they presided over the looting of the country resources, the mutilation, the recruitment and mutilation of child soldiers into the very military groups that he and Charles Seder were running around here, it is our future. It is a generation that we represent. It is our future that they were jeopardized they destroy the future of this country. And it is just unfortunate that the system that we have here encourages the culture of impunity. And that's the only reason why a man at C.B. Allen will still come on the radio and begin to talk the way he does. You know, it's not just unfortunate. But this is, this is a clear reminder to every well-meaning Liberian that we have a lot to do in fixing this country. Because when you have a system, a system that will encourage, that will promote some of the people who bear the greatest of responsibility for the atrocities that were committed in the country, to go with impunity and to even have the unbridled audacity to come back on the radio and say, oh, the government that we ran here was better than the government they put running now and this and that, I think our country is doomed. Our country is really doomed. In any serious country, the PR said, the man that Siri Allen should be howling when day breaks. He should not be a partaker in any public discourse because he's not a decent character. He's not a decent person. The NPP talking about Joe Bagard and no investment and bidding road and doing nothing. The NPP control 90% of Liberia. Can Siri Allen tell you, members of the public, 
É sem oscura. É uma bebacha ser a igreja da Bíblia? Zero! Not a single clinic, not a single school the president Taylor built, that the MP ever built, that the MP built for the many years of control Liberia for. I mean, greater Liberia, even when Taylor became president. They may, look, the, the, the trademark of the MPP in this country is child mutilation, rape, the recruitment of teenage boys and girls into the Malaysia forces. They destroy. Look, when you talk about the issue of drugs and abuse, and you know, the last for the people, Zogo. That's the MPP legacy. So for a man who is a star of the MPP to come on the radio and begin to, to lambast and throw and, you know, loose talks on well-meaning people, I just think it speaks to the kind of system that we have. Because if we had tried to fix our country, wherein the culture of impunity would not be allowed to thrive in this country, I mean, see, I would not have the ghost. He would not have the courage to go on the radio and say, oh, they won't be president. What are they doing? Fast forward to even the we are government. Siri Allen is chairman or uh, some member of the Golden Council of the CDC, the Coalition of Democratic Change. Look how they have governed this country over the last five years. We are having this conversation on the day that marks exactly one year to the election. Take a mental flight back to 2017 when Mr. Weah became president in November 2018, where Labro was. We all who sit on the platform and project the way Labro was going because Eddie had passed the baton over to Mr. Weah. Today, it is difficult because all of the gains that were made by the state of administration have been derailed, undermined, and distorted by the Weah government. And Siri Allen wants all to believe that he's some moral voice. I mean, I don't want to waste my time on him. I can just hope. And that's the reason why some of us are painstakingly wasting our time, our energy, our resources to ensure that the country can have a better leadership. Because in the absence of any better leadership that will address the country's historical problem, the likes of Siri Allen will continue to be around and carry themselves as some moral voice in this country. He's not moral voice. He can be reminding us of our responsibility because his records are available. You don't have to read history just by empirical experience. What the MPP did in this country, the legacy of the MPP, should not allow some of the Siri Adam to come on the radio and talk. But again, the guys at Spoon FM and Spoon Talk I have since gotten very disappointed because you cannot be a particular in the public discourse and you're very uninformed. I think Stanton Waterspoon, the entire team, they are not qualified to have public discourses. You cannot have the member spread of a mosquito and try to get, get it. You got to be very retentive. Because it's, it's, it's Siri Allen sits on the platform and we question him based on the, the interaction of how the MPP, the historical lessons we learned from the MPP. You may not be courageous to say some of the things he said, but because you got someone like Keith Hassan and, and Stanton Waterspoon sitting on. Hey, Daniel. We're losing him. I think it's internet. La la bro. Yeah. Hopefully but, you but come back. That's right, Stevie. I mean, it's, it's sorrowful. Sorrowful. You know, I live on the bypass. You remember the story of rescue mother? I don't know where you were there, PR, because you, they chased you all over the country. Prior to Taylor's departure, there were all the wounded soil used to pass. Those guys were behind the mansion, Stevie. They go to Busa Kuala, for example, they eat in the Poco Bosha, they can't pay. They said that your business will fight it for. We remember those days. As someone can tell me about MPB town. I grew up in Phoebe there. You know, I see yeah, my man and uh, uh, walk up and uh, nobody walk up saying the day will bring the day will bring you Ali here and you'll be told the class. Walk up, you know, you don't see Ali will not come here. You know, you don't see Ali will not come here. The we don't even have to go to the MPB pass. We can just use and, 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 and the kind of, that kind of uh of of if you have Siri Allen dares to come here, the kind of uh free pass he had my man on, on the other network, you can't have it here. The man was we, eating we, we are not, in the middle of the night. We were not we were not uh we were not standing on the margin of history. We we were not observer in our history, we were we were active participants in the history. 
So when 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 Sir Allen and the MPP were in power, we were we were we were, we were cautious in the first students. But what 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 what's, what's Sir Allen can tell me about leadership or not? Or not or not exactly. Not. I, 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 I was, I was, I was, I was, one, of, I was one, of one of many young people who disagree with the mismanagement of our country by the M M M M MPP led government. And we didn't do so by folding our hands. We challenged them. We took Taylor on. We did not give Taylor any peace until he chased us into exile. 21 student leaders. So we know exactly what we we're fighting against. So how can I sit on a platform with our interviewing Stephen Allen for him to lecture me about governance during the period? Well, actually, I have to be reminding him and holding his feet to the fire. What he was doing instead was intimidating the people. When the lady tried to make small effort of pushing, I didn't come there for a dialogue. And you can push me because I know how to push people. And then stand on panic and turn the lady say, you, you, you got to slow down. <laughs> You allow a, a, a man like Siri Allen because he talks loosely to intimidate you? He said, we're in the US. When we talk on these people who were in the country, who are in the country challenging them, you said, we're in the US. And a man who is your guest from abroad threatening you indirectly and you panic and you buy into his nonsense and subdue yourself and subdue that by reducing. Huh? Who Stuart Allen can come lecture about what about 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 who can even lecture about what taking place in Liberia now? But who let's just let yeah, yeah, let's let's try the conversation to this government that he said he will be campaigning for. He knows that. I'm asking who let can he lecture about what happened happened in the world now, now, now. Let's talk now. Let's look at the economy. Let's talk about healthcare. When Syrian Ali Charles Taylor was rebel leader, Phoebe never went out of line. I want Syrian Ali to tell me. Who was born there? Who went to Phoebe Lutheran School and lived in Hospital for the Six? How has George Weah made Phoebe better? I just want to really make that argument. But again, like I say, people who want to be involved in discussing national issues must do themselves this favor by informing themselves, must prepare themselves. Because there were so many questions that went on unanswered yesterday. Daniel Sano back. We don't know how to <laughs> do that in Miami will last one. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, at the country, at the country with you, the, nothing, nothing is of standard here. The leadership, no standard. The service delivery sector, no standard. So you can even have, you can even have ten gig. I mean, on your package, it can go out anytime. That the country we in. <laughs> yeah, imagine I was making my point. I just love, just like that. Exactly, and we are, you know, you are in the middle of your flight, and uh, when you. Yeah, so 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 as I was saying, let me just conclude. I know we have to go to other issues. The guys who decided to be on spoon to to to, to be uh, having a conversation as to the national march of I mean foul march of this country, they, they need to equip themselves. Because if you are hosting somebody like Siri Allen who has a very terrible track record in this country, you have to be very mindful. You need to go through the lines of history, you need to remind him because. I cannot be the guy who was yesterday oppressed of the people, participated, supported a government that was very tyrannical, a government that led to the blacklisting of this country. Liberia became a pariah state on Taylor. Siri Allen is not on record for even distancing himself for the mask. The summary disappearances and the claim down on civil liberties by the Taylor administration in this country. He didn't do so. So go on the road to the NCO, people who won't contest again, President, we are at Macambia and then Mobile School, the Mobile Factory. How many schools did they build? Still control 90% of this country. Greater Liberia. How many schools did he build? How many clinics did he build? We can only hold you accountable when the gave you the opportunity to serve. We also encourage the public to look at a track record of people who are vying for elected offices in the country. It's very key. It's very key. 
So today, I mean, the, the, the CDC and the MPP have similar resemblance. The CDC, a party that is deeply rooted in hooliganism, nobody knows as to how what Mr. Weir is even committed to fighting corruption. Look how the country is again being blacklisted and isolated by the international partner, calling the government action of taking the money from the bank, the central bank, as irresponsible. The U.S. State Department all thought that our country has come of age and our government spelling, Ajibo Bana, is now taking this country back to where it came from. So it's very concerning, and every Liberian should be concerned about this thing. The how come yesterday we were a pariah state? It cost the Selim administration a great deal of political capital to refix the country on the international scene. Today, Mr. Weir is back here, and everything has been derailed. Why? Because he got someone that's serial ally in his company. It's very much frustrating. It's unfortunate for our country. And again, he wouldn't be sounding or talking the way he talks if the culture of impunity was not being encouraged and nurtured by the WIA administration. So when we talk about war crime code, we're not just targeting Prince Johnson. We don't want somebody who was yesterday oppressor and murderer to be coming and be talking. They wouldn't act in that way. They wouldn't say so because the culture of impunity have given them the protection they deserve. It's very much disturbing for our country. So, Daniel, Daniel, can you hear me? Daniel, can you hear me? I think there's a lagging when it gets yeah, to related to him. Because I wanted us to talk about the yeah, party, the Liberty Party. <laughs> Africa orders independence. Yeah, I'm I'm I think it's good. Okay, Daniel. Yeah, uh, now let's move. Let's move to let's move to the Liberty Party. What is happening? What is happening? I see Musa issue a uh, uh, Martin issue a press. Yes, I'm hearing you. Yeah, I wanted I wanted to what they I saw a press statement from Musa Belede concerning um the now receiving application for uh aspirants on the um uh, on the Liberty Party. What is going on? Uh, I'm, uh, I'm hearing you. Hearing me now? Yeah, we can hear you. We can hear you loud and clear. Can you hear us? What, what, what I need to stop there? Say the man internet going into selling beer. <laughs> Daniel, Daniel needs to go back off and come back. Yeah, in. Daniel, you want to log off and log back in. Hopefully. No, but, but, but Stevie, right? Uh, PR, let me say this, right? In the 21st century, who's going to do business in a country? With these type of conditions, we brought a fiber optic cable to, to, to the shores of Monrovia. You won't tell me this government. You, you, you know, for people who don't know Musa, Musa. Daniel, we, 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 we can't hear you. Daniel, Daniel, Daniel is struggling. Imagine doing an international wire while the internet doing like this, Steven, with so much money. I'm just serious, man. How could you do a transaction at a bank with this type of internet service? Just be honest, bro. How you do business in that, bro? It's, it's just, the thing is not a show. The president said, y'all go jogging. I think that's his understanding of development. Who do business in a country like this? Daniel, Daniel can you hear us? This is embarrassing. Yeah, we, we're losing Danny. I really, really want him to have. You got to go back up and come back on. He's trying so hard, my man, but now he's. Yeah, you, you, I know you will come back. Once, once he, he goes he goes off, he he he, he, he come back. Um, you will come back stronger. So, so George, let's talk about. Uh, uh, um, uh, let's talk about the. Um, let's go with the rice. Yeah, the rice issue. Uh, 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 and I, and I, you know, I see, I see. This is how mediocre, in terms of mindset and 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 and, and, and overall measurement of success, the CDC government is right. Uh, the CDC government will mess something up, and then when they try to fix it, then they celebrate. So you come to a country where we have. The supply chain of rice was relatively stable. You mess it up, 
Then you come back. Now you 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 you're all over in the South region begging for rice. When they gave you a few bags, you bring them over. Then you expect like people to celebrate you. I think we're having Daniel come back. So let me see. Daniel. Sure, I'm here. Yeah, you better now. So yeah, let's go. Let's go. Away. Go ahead. Trail us to your party party stuff. You said Musa Musa issued a press statement uh, requesting applic applicants for for legislative candidates. Yeah, they start receiving application for 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 those uh, desires of wanting to contest under the Liberty Party ticket. Well, you know. Is it really in a broad way? Daniel, Daniel, really or what? No, Daniel, we can't. People paying for services, look at what they're getting. Yeah, and then and then they it is embarrassing, man. Party. The audacity people paying for internet service, look at what they're getting. I mean, I'm lying to you. Let me go. Steven, you know, Sarah Sar Sar sent in that promo for GMB so he wanted to display before the show ends. Oh, can I get email it to me? Okay, oh, no problem. Hold on, let me hear let me, let me, Daniel, you there? Maybe Daniel need to move to, 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 to leave Miami, go to New York. Maybe, <laughs> yeah, maybe you want to change your location in the house and go closer to the Wi-Fi. This, this is embarrassing, man. What? Africa, oldest country. You can't even get a stable internet for 20 minutes straight in a row. Yeah. Daniel, you need to go closer to the Wi Fi uh, if you. I think he's on his phone. Yeah, he won't. Now, only in a way, you say, can't gig. Direct. We don't count gig. It's either unlimited or that's it. We ain't doing gig business in the 21st century. That's how yeah, you know that. Yeah. Like, bro, the poor thing complaining about terrible internet. But somebody, but anyway, these are. Uh... But Stephen, though, we, I speak to people in, in Freetown. I speak to people in other African countries. They don't have the problem we are experiencing, like, bro. But because That's we don't question. have a government, the government is not regulating the service provider. The value for money. It. The value for money. People pay for internet. I see people a lot of the value. You talk about people, people see the free all. call. You, they, my man, no internet is too expensive in Liberia. We live in this country, someone will watch all these different lives on our phones for an unlimited plan for $70, $80 a year. In Liberia, they post spending more than 100 and some other. They post saying, get the services. And I see people are dead on the street. They say, oh, you're dead on the And nobody taking action to this service provider. If you, people, people, I see a lot of people complaining how their credit finish on their phone. I mean, so it's so, it's so terrible, man. It's terrible. It's terrible, Stevie. You were saying some of the rest issue will get Daniel was Yeah, yeah, we'll get Daniel back. We'll, we'll take. So on this right issue, you see, so the, it's like a house, right? You have a house well furnished. They give you the house with everything in it. You talk about the house. Then you decide to use the living room as your as your bathroom. You're taking bath in the living room. You you toiling all in the living room. You you do everything there. Then the whole living room is messed up. Then people start complaining that your living room is messed up. You go out, you, you start cleaning it, and then you come back to the same people. They might be like, see, I clean, cleaning my living room. Hey, I'm doing good thing, I clean my living room. Now, this is exactly the case with the government. You mess up everything, and then when you when you try to fix it a little bit, then you celebrate. When you, why should Liberians even have to deal with the issue of rice shortage at a time when we already know that Liberians consume a million bags of rice a day, let me say a month, which if you amortize that, you know, if you if you divide it by 30 days, you're talking about 33,400 bags of rice a day, the consumption level, you should already know at, at, at every interval how much of a supply of the rice you should have within, either within reach of port or in your warehouse or, you know, in stock. Those are things you need to know. So, George, how do you look, when you look at this whole rice crisis and how the government was very irresponsible in doing this, and, and, and you see people trying to justify, you know, using say, oh, rice was before in the other government, rice was this much, now it's this much. How do you, how do you, what do you say to people like that? Uh, Steven, you know, 
uh, these are very sad. These are sad times in our country history. Uh, I've always said that, President, we are inability to read. It's, it's, it's really hurting the country. If President we are who left Grand Cru work from 1970 now, however, talking to get to Monrovia, will not understand that on April 14, 1979, the librarians took to the streets. It's not because they were rushed shortage, not because they were shortage, with a policy that was intended to increase prices on imported rice so that it will sway people to buy more domestic produced rice. That is all that policy was about. That is all it was intended to do. Increase tariff on imports, their rice, which that means you are left with a domestic option that you go for because it will be cheaper. People got into the street. People lost their lives. Subsequently, 1980, April 12, will follow where the president will get killed. President Weir will have a Ministry of Commerce. Stephen Wow will be discussing this. President Weir, in a BBC interview, was asked by the journalist, he said, Mr. We are many of the people who supported you. They are complaining that the prices of basic commodities are so high, including their stable food rice. He said, you can't bring the prices down. What the president we are saying in that interview? But what I'm going to do? I tell the people can bring rice down, they can't bring the red press down. This man did not understand that the function of the Ministry of Commerce that is in charge of price control, that he should have said right there, that I've instructed the Ministry of Commerce to do an investigation and put a report on my desk as it relates to subsidies and our supply. Stephen, this is not the first time we've had these problems. Now, here is the most interesting thing about President Weir's inability. Do you know this government on April 14, 2018, received 1,243 metric tons of rice from the government of China as full assistance here? What we thought from a smart government perspective that this government would have used that the proceeds from that rice, that they would be selling to create some type of competition in the market that would have kept rice price down. Sadly for us, do you recall the famous page of Stephen when the, the Inspector General of Commerce, Josephine David, was at the Red Light Market selling rice? Exactly. The, the proper rice. Yeah. That was the proper rice. They took the rice, they put it in a proper bag. And they were boasting all around town. So again, give me one second, Stephen. Let me put this thing on charge here. I left my charger out. So, Pia, you muted, Pia. You muted. It's unfortunate that Daniel is on and off because he needs to be here. Uh, we want our people to be able to call and, and push their own issues and. If it's not here, it, it's a constraint to the local people calling. Yeah. So I don't know what is what is really going Daniel, on. Daniel, you need to come back home, my man. Yeah, I don't know what's really going on with the guys. Yeah, but 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 you know the, the rest issue we we talk about it, we talk about it, we talk about it, and apparently the government hasn't learned anything from all the talking we've been doing because if you learn something, you'll be more focused on finding solution to the problem. Than celebrating the arrival of a ship to bring rice. I mean, just of rice stupidity. How can a government, in the midst of a rest crisis, be celebrating the arrival of a ship to bring rice? One of your fiduciary responsibility to work with business people, keep food and other products that the people need for their daily survival on the market. You allow it to go away from the market. You saw what the people pass through. And you think by the mere arrival of a ship that bringing food with no guarantee of how long it will be, you think you've mitigated the problem? I mean, you're not learning as a government. You're not understood the fundamental of, of what it means to govern. It's the same thing. You refuse to pay people their, their, their just salaries. You take months. Then when you ready to pay them, you call press conference and you start reading that you're paying people. Exactly. How do you celebrate paying somebody for the work they do? How do you celebrate having something like rice on the market that you're not distributing free, but people buy with their own money? They just want to be available. You're allowed to leave the market. People pass through all that they pass through. 
How do you celebrate the arrival of a ship to bring rice? You should donate. If what we saw in the past few days and week, we should not have seen it in the first place. You should be ashamed that all those things happen. You know, and 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 the way the government runs is even difficult for some. I was reading some paper that says they, I mean, they were asking questions whether uh, I don't know whether they were asking questions or saying they. The, the Minister of Information uh, wants to resign. And what we're attributing it to is our government taking uh, 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 a PR of money from the ministry's budget and all of that. If, if, if there's any truth in that, it will be far beyond that because sometimes, based on the conduct of the government, being a communicator for that government can be the most difficult job in the entire government. And you just get fed up along the way and say, by continuing, I would just be right in my office saying I just drop one money and they say the man fell, I'll be gone, I will not come back. Like, like what my, my good friend and brother, my brother Nippon, uh, uh, encountered. So somebody just look at it and say, does it worth it? Let me call it a quit. When the government is not doing well, when they keep creating problems over and over, the man who manages communication for that kind of government got the most difficult job. And sometimes we all of us should just say, Man, go out find some kind of way for my children myself to find dry resume. Because people don't know what they're doing. They don't know what they're doing. You cause chaos. People, women jumping over fence to fight for rights. Old ladies lacking cop in the street crying. Oh, Rezo. Oh, we want Rezo. Oh, Rezo. And all the kind of bad picture and uptake. And what you're doing is celebrating the arrival of a ship to bring rights. How have we come to the point where we have lowered the bar for governance so badly? I don't get it, man. Stevie, I want to end on something. Uh, I thought you had it. Uh, I want me, I'd like to speak to the government. So the CDC chief propagandist, uh, Akara Moses Gray, who claimed to be <laughs> the general, he wrote something on Facebook this morning stating that the United Party sold rice $16. They are now selling rice for $13. And we want to talk. So for me, I like to speak to the facts and having the numbers, it makes it a lot easier. What I, I said to him was that simple. The day President Weah was inaugurated, a cup of rice was $20 Liberian dollars. So if we were selling rice for $16 at that time, Stephen, but a cup of rice was $20 Liberian dollars, how is it today if you're selling rice for twenty for $13, a cup of rice is over $80. It's, it's 100. It goes to 100. No, no, me, I, I like to be consecutive because I'm a Republican here in America. So how does that make sense? That is to tell you the people understanding of how they think. That's how you know that they have no idea of what they're dealing with here. Because the Minister of Finance will come out and tell us that when George Weah was inaugurated, inflation was at 13.5%. Granted. Now, if inflation was at 13.5% for a gallon of gas was $350 like grand dollars, a cartoon of fish in Douala market was $4,800. Today, if you claim inflation is at 7.5%, a gallon of gas is almost over $650. That cartoon of fish right now is over $14,000 like grand dollars. So what economics are you using? What sense are you making? You sound more ignorant when you do those type of things. And this is one reason why these guys want to spoon because the panelists on spoon have no understanding of what they're talking about. And they sit there and just lecture. How can the Minister of Finance tell me that we are doing so well in the economy? We are recording record breaking revenue, but cannot tell me when last he paid teachers on time, Stevie? What is the budget? So, again, on the issue of rights, you spoke brilliantly, Stevie. This government should have known their, their reserve. It is important. Such a major commodity, gasoline, medication, and, and, and food. We import over 87% of everything we consume. You should always know where your supply chain is. Exactly. But now, only that, Stevie, the letter from the port, I think the next time, please, you all need to highlight it where they said that they, they, the port had raised issue which was going to cost insurance to go up. They have not dredged the port. Yeah, we'll talk about it on uh, Okay, on so 
so there's the steps that should have been taken to make sure that bigger vessel can come in to bring in rice at high with high quantity it has not been done so this bandage solution of solving problems it would not help us and and that is what frustrates me and, and and these guys think that they are stupid they think our people are ignorant our people don't know what is happening you heard a woman on the on the, on the video saying they cannot tell you we see it before i can't agree so your economic don't make sense and who you think you can fool in the 21st century the cdc has done nothing steven let me tell you this is how embarrassed and pathetic these guys are they borrow 155 million from the world bank through the special drawing right program every time they disperse 20 million to them the whole government whole press conference everybody posted on their page my man you borrow 150 million it'll get you 10 million that means you say got 140 there when they gave you five million you'll go whole press conference and they say no one can do business with us. and they say we can't get money i mean in this 21st century stevie so again man the, the librarian people look someone use the words i should say some librarians we as librarians we have an obligation to ourselves and our future and i want to say this to you we've done all we can some of us we've committed ourselves to this fight but you people will have to really take this fight hand on you people are the ones on the front line you are the ones who have been driving around town trying to find rights you are the one who know what you're going through no amount of lives will change your life folks these boys are are happy with where they are they are relaxed they are settled it is you and your children that are going through these things those guys don't care about you so all these lies and these platforms that have been created to peddle government lies to create the opportunity i think siri allen went to spoon to campaign for cdc and the west stanton lay back for me i think it was like just come and campaign that's what siri allen was doing so technically you people should know this is why some of you what you listen to the shows you follow it means a lot you know you know because somebody has shared with fair me with lies that is a problem you will have somebody has shared with me uh, uh um you know the clip and and i you know normally before you do show especially when you have guests and hosts you 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 guys got to do some huddles and most of the time me and pia will talk by the time we leave the show pia will call me or i call him we'll talk about where we can improve what we do the next day and and, and if we're getting guests you know we we'll do our behind the scene huddle what i saw from the clip that the clip somebody shared with me was you 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 essentially were putting your your fellow panelists under the bus on live tv making her to appear like uh, she was she was ignorant of what she was really saying because you allow your guests to make some derogatory comments about her and even trying to downplay her education and you and you allow him to fly when she wanted to interrupt him you talk about give the guest chance. no now listen in 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 in, in 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 that kind of a conversation there are times where people allow people to interrupt who told you this is uh is a guest speaker kind of engagement where you come you stay on the stage you talk and when you're done with your speech you're out of there no there should be a period where a guest and the journalist can go back and forth now you you watch Mehdi Hassan the guy from up from debate you saw how he was engaging especially how you saw when Ellen Johnson said he went there how he embarrassed her on live tv these are the kind of exchanges heated exchanges because first you have you as a host will have to be informed two you have to do rehearsals in the back scene but you know you just come out there and i and i thought uh, they didn't treat um the, Steven, the doctor well. point, right it's siri ali was ruled to some extent when it comes to dr richardson but let me tell you dr richardson's struggle she had you could tell that she really didn't have understanding of the issues and that is why she struggled in terms of a line of questioning and let me tell you the guys from mpp if you don't know what to say to them i promise you Stephen, they will bury you imagine yeah, yeah. Bunny pass away on spoon but but no disrespect to anybody but most of these uh people on most of the other talks you have it. look josh i'll tell people something you have to you have to live the issue you have to go through it it's like a refinery. You don't just wake up in the morning and you think you can, you understand librarian situation. No, no. 
You got to go through it. You got to spend well, time say we, You and myself, we share just articles here and there, even when there's no show. There's yeah, no, we, there's we, we, you we, I don't think. We're not sure. We, you, you, we, you see I something bet, to share I with bet, you. I can bet, I can bet 95% of the people who are doing these, uh, how, how many books you've read? <laughs> you know, how many books you've read in the last 10 years? It, it's, it's embarrassing. And, and that's why they say sometimes when I go to this platform, they say, oh, Lobo comes with, with numbers and bring this. Because I want to be informed. When you are informed, you know what to say. And it's in, look, let me, let me tell you, Steven, there was there, there was a certain line of questioning. It was so embarrassing to me. I felt that they should have just allowed Steven Ali to just have his good day because they themselves, they were not prepared. I'm not saying he was right. There at some point in time, he really was very condescending towards Dr. Richardson. I must tell you yeah. that. So, but so, again, so, so, sometimes... You can't see your movie tree and you won't honor your Steven. That's why I thought happened to yeah. school yesterday. Let's take a quick break. I want to share the flyer with GMB coming. You'll take a quick Go break, ahead. then we'll come back. So, um, Judge, can you hear me? So, um, yeah, so, we, you know, that's the flyer for the, uh, for the, uh, for the program. Next Wednesday, Joseph Waka will be our guest here on the class. Uh, we'll be talking wide range of, uh, of, uh, national issues, uh, uh, his vision for Liberia, um, his plans for, uh, the country campaign the unity party and where the uh he, he intends to move the country uh after after he's announced president in october of next year uh, so you know those will be things we'll discuss so uh unfortunately i hope daniel was here we needed we wanted to you know take calls from liberia to talk to um to talk to our listeners in liberia especially uh unfortunately we, i don't think we will be able to get daniel back on this Call and Daniel, if you're listening, if you're watching, can you can you rejoin us? Hopefully, you know, and and, and see how best we can uh, we can uh, talk about the issues and get calls from uh, from like your guys. Uh, uh, um, we're almost at that time, but it, and and, and let, you know, let's just talk on one final thing, then we can open the lines. So, uh, and I'm sure both of you yeah, been yeah. following both of you been following the uh, the National Elections Commission, um, the biometrics. So the company that was hired to do the work, uh, after the procurement process backfired because of the back and forth between the National Electrics Commission and the uh, PPCC, which is the Public Procurement and Concession Commission. So the net went back and then and, 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 and because PPCC had requested that it's needed to do a live demonstration. Now um, we told that they did a live demonstration and they think could not work. Now we, we're still talking procurement of an entity that should do biometrics, 
when voter registration is supposed to start in December. Now, we, we've gone two weeks in October already. Uh, technically, you have a month, which is a month and, and, and two weeks for for um for for voter registration to start and we still have not been able to procure the services of a firm that will do the biometric now it works up because if the if 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 the neck have produced a final list of a of a firm called ikent which is basically a nigerian a nigerian and a chinese firm to do the work and they, they don't even have the capacity as far as we know it's worrisome. We go to election next year. The National Elections Commission is still struggling with who should do biometrics. What, what you know? It's it's dangerous. It's dangerous for our country. It's dangerous for for our democracy because elections are at the core of our of our governance of our democracy, and that the right the right to vote it is a, it is an inalienable right given to us by God. The fact that we are Liberians. We were born and raised in that country. We have the right to vote and utter our government through and by our vote. So this is an important issue, and I thought we should just talk about it. Then uh, we'll open the lines. George, you, you have a number there that we can use, right? So just send it to me in back. Uh, then if I have to do, set it up. Let me set no, it up for if, you guys. If not, we'll just use PR number. Don't worry. Yeah, use PR number because I had to set it up. Yeah, so yeah. just let's talk about this. Then we'll open the line. We're going to an hour. Let PR you. go first. PR, yeah, you can I go ahead. Last. Let PR go ahead. When we, I remember when Ellen came to power, when President Sandy came to power, then the country had an 80 million dollar budget. We knew that most of our developmental priority would not be realized with an 80 million budget, even if we started the process of growing the budget. So one of the things we decided to do, thanks to how connected President Sandy was internationally, was to launch what we call the Liberia Reconstruction Trust Fund. And I think that was in 2006, 2006, 2007. The essence of that fund was for our partners and international people to help us to raise money for developmental purposes. And one of the things we had to do to motivate the international partners to, to contribute to that um, Reconstruction Trust Fund is to, to take the management of the fund exclusively out of the hands of the government. That it will be a kind of hard birth situation whereby the people bringing their money and, and representative of the government will jointly find a way to manage the fund, including uh, determining projects to be financed, uh, determining the procurement processes for those projects and all of that. I thought that because we don't have the resources ourselves to migrate from our manual system of voting that we've been doing to a biometric system, and because the international people will be deeply involved in terms of financing, I thought the whole idea of procuring should have taken that same hybrid approach that we took uh, when we had funding for the National Reconstruction Trust Fund to undertake developmental project. So for example, you see they were paving road for that trust fund, the Monrovia to Ganta border, the Bikana to Monrovia. These are all highways that were financed from that trust fund. The procurement processes for those projects were not left exclusively with the government. So it ensured credibility, it ensured transparency, and ensured that the right thing was done. So for a process as crucial as our election process that we want to migrate from manual to biometric, I thought the recruitment exercise of who does the biometric, if international put money coming in, should have been a hybrid approach or a joint approach that would have enhanced credibility, and that would have avoided us to be where we are today. I think we are where we are today because that re re responsibility to, to, to procure for that process was left exclusively with the NEC. And the way the NEC has responded to this company, since they took, since they, they, they chose this company, since the PPCC has some issues, 
they try to reverse it. The stance that has been taken by the neck tells me that that process was not transparent and that process that led to that group being chosen was induced. And that's risky for our electron hearing process. An integrity institution cannot be always in the midst of integrity wahala, that every little process the owner take is characterized by wahala, questions and doubts. Those same conditions and behavior will extend to the election itself, and if care not taken, will plunge the country into crisis, will plunge the country into chaos, because the very first step of just procuring a company for a process that we now use before that we're trying to, to migrate to has proven to be this controversial and so unclear and so untransparent. That's what I think. Uh, Stevie, Stevie, real quick, uh, here's, here's my take on it. Uh, I strongly believe and I support Ambassador Boyka's statement. Uh, the, my standard bearer political leader said he has no confidence, no confidence in the National Elections Commission. Uh, we have a National Elections Commission chair who is an indictee on a corruption case. As a matter of fact, she was even bailed out by Musa Belete from the Liberty Party. Think about it. How does that sound? The chairman of the National Elections Commission, the body responsible to hold election, credible, transparent, free and fair election, who is in court on corruption allegations. Having said that, uh, the issue of PPCC, we know what happened. Uh, this government transparency is a serious problem when it comes to this government. Uh, this government integrity and honesty, they run parallel. So again, it is concerning. I strongly do believe, Stephen, that we do not have the infrastructure, the proper mechanism to do a biometric election come October of 2023. That's all I want to say on this because any attempt, this could put this country into something completely different. And Stevie, I can say this to you with all no fear. For some of us in the Unity Party, as many people refer to some of us as Highline or whatever, we've been very, very calm when it comes to allowing President We are to enjoy this time. But what we will not do is to allow the CDC to use any quasi means possible to keep George Weah into power beyond 2023. We will ensure that if our people will have to vote with marbles, that their marbles will be counted and that those marbles will ensure that George Weah is never elected president. Anyone who decides that for whatever reason they must stay in power, then that's a complete different conversation. And those are conversations we'll be prepared to hold. Whatever it will take, we'll be prepared for those reasons. And that is why we are ensuring that this is not just going to be a talk. This is why we will be prepared to resign jobs here to return to Liberia to ensure that we're not in America and talking about it. And President, we have an obligation to the country. Ensuring that there's a free, fair, transparent election is part of his obligation. But when we speak of this man, many failures as a government, whether that to provide for his citizens, whether that to protect his citizens, this guy just can't do it. So again, his inability to hold a peaceful, transparent election is something that we must question at all times. The library people, no. We have an obligation to ourselves, and we need to correct this wrong. This is why the issue of runoff, no runoff, should not be in the conversation. We all need to make up our mind from now to October 2023. This is who we believe is the best candidate to be the next president, and let's just go for, for that person. Let's ignore all these so many candidates, the notion that we have to share the vote to go to runoff, those are things that fill into President Weah's narrative. Let us avoid it. Let us not waste our time. They have their own ulterior motive. Don't give them any reason to support their evil agenda. Let's vote like we never voted before. Let us vote and ensure that there's no discussion on runoff. There's no way Joseph Walker accumulates 55 to 60% of the vote in the, in the first round. George Weah and CDC folks will even be brave to discuss one of because that means they will be smoking under the sacrament tree and we'll be prepared to respond to that. But you people don't get the reason for that. So start making up your mind and you have enough reason to decide 
Don't divide the vote. Don't create no condition. Vote for who you believe is best to lead Liberia. And we have a candidate who's the most experienced, who's best suited to be president on day one. Folks, let us avoid this problem. Let us not create a situation and start sitting there and start saying, if I want to know, if I want to know, no, no. You now know that this man cannot deliver. Don't even give him the opportunity to talk about second round. Let's vote this guy out in the first round. End of story. That is my take on this issue, Stevie. Thank you. And I think you, 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 know, you and Pia made valid points that uh, there shouldn't be any reason whatsoever why we are to even, to even be a consideration next year. No reason whatsoever. The CDC is a massive failure. The country is is far is in a far worse condition than it was even during the war years. There's no leadership. Uh, we have no clear understanding about any direction to move the country. Uh, the issue of uh, national renewal and nation building are all but uh, elusive. Um, Liberians have no faith in their government. Uh, the issue of security and the rule of law are all compromised. Um, the country is 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 it's in a state of chaos. Uh, people are crying in the streets for rights. People forming long queues, sleeping for days at warehouses only to buy a bag of rice. The government has refused to communicate to the people. The president only goes to a place he calls church. And many of us call it a bullet puppet to trash talk people who he believes are opposition to him. And so with these kind of things happening in the country, you wonder why we actually even be in the list, on the list of uh, of consideration for 2023. We have to be nowhere near the conversation about 2023. Liberians should turn up in their minds and vote. We are out. Look, this, this government has absolutely no plans, zero plans whatsoever to move like we're in any direction. In, in and forward in any direction forward this government is a, is a colossal failure it's a colossal failure this government has absolutely no solution to any of the problems that liberians are faced with the government this is one of the the the, the in terms of what this government inherited this is one of the government in the last hundred years i would say or more that have really come to power on a platform that was already built for you to succeed. When 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 other government took over, the, the library was in shambles. You know, let's look at even when when as as brutal and tyrannical and and despotic Taylor government was, he had become president after a long scale war. When 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 when, when and then he he he, he compounded that. All of the, the the negative vices from the war in his administration, and when it rolled over, when Ellen became president, we all saw the kind of Liberia she inherited. In fact, Ellen inherited a far worse Liberia than any president in the history of Liberia. Than any president in the history of Liberia, Ellen inherited a far worse Liberia than any president in the history. When Taylor was up until the nineties, we still had electricity. We had bomb water but later when the rebel destroyed it but when ellen became president he had zero megawatt of electricity he, all your roads had collapsed because they are outlived their usefulness without any repairs the healthcare system was a mess the educational system the the peace security rule of law the, the army was already compromised uh, the military had been used as a fashion uh, by hezekiah bowen and the other guys uh, the police was, was 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 a faction of police because most of the guys who went to the police had gone there to represent their faction. So there was a whole conundrum of uh, of of mess that they continued. So we have now come to power. He came to power with a budget over five hundred and sixty million, a national security restructure, a military restructure, a police vibrant and active, a reserve of over one hundred and ninety million, almost two hundred million reserve. You had institution already established. You get the PPCC, you get the National Electrical Commission, all vibrant working. You get the, the GSC, you get the the, 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 the the Governance Commission, everything vibrant and moving. You have a ministerial complex where no more government paying rent to public individual, to private individual to use the building. You had a ministerial complex. All of your roads, all of your major highway have been paid, community roads all intact. You have a new airport. 
civil servant salary had increased from fifteen dollars to over two hundred dollars in some instances. You 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 had a, a vibrant trained workforce. Plenty of people who the government has sent overseas to educate them. They come back home, and now you come back and you take over that kind of country. You took over a a, a vibrant country in order to carry the country backward. So like George we have to be ashamed of himself. And when, when no sedition, no sedition to have the, the audacity to speak about, about Liberia in the way that they do talk about, oh, your heart to yeah, you did it. No, you should be ashamed of yourself. Even your own life, five years ago, uh, compared to today, you had a better life, better prospect five years ago. There were a lot of people who, who were benefiting in the United Party government. They were not partisan. Bill Trower and I were, 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 were classmates in graduate school, but Bill was still a sedition. Bill, Bill was a sedition, a, 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 a hardcore sedition. There were many people, Samuel Tua and I worked together at the Ministry of Finance. Samuel Tua was a declared sedition. But like Bill didn't care, the government didn't care, the government wanted the best and brightest so that you could move your country. And this is how a country succeeds. No country succeeds in the absence of putting your best and brightest into position that they can deliver. It happens all over the world. How come Liberia is still an exception? It happens all over. You can never move Liberia forward with your best minds outside of government. You can never. You can never. And when you when you reduce public service to a partisanship service, you undermine your own government. You know how many people Ellen sent overseas to train? You know how many people, people went to some of the best schools across the world? Harvard, Cornell, Yale, Georgetown, Penn State. In, in London, people, people went to, 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 to London School of Economics, Oxford, Manchester University, Reading. Some of these kids went to Peking University in China, some all over the world, India, Australia, ANU, Australian National University. Hundreds of thousands of Liberians travel overseas on the island to come to, to educate. But one day, when this CDC government took over because they work in the previous government, you saw land them, you said because they work in previous government, so they 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 they, they contaminated now. They can't work for them, they can't serve their country because they serve a previous government. Now, what you left with is you have people like Abby we said who can barely read and write, who can barely say anything sensible, serving as minister to supervise people. Who told you assistant minister job is an entry-level job? Who told you this is look in public bureaucracy assistant minister is the boundary between the the, the civil servant and the, and the policy maker so the highest level in the civil service is a director for you to be a director in liberia based on the new stuff you must at least have a master's degree when we when the reform happening at finance now if if the highest level in the civil servant is a director and that director must get the job based on experience, expertise. How can the existing minister, who is his immediate boss, be an entry-level position? That you take young girls and boys who have no work history, you put them into 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 a system. And now, what they do is that they just come on Facebook, take pictures. They've not written one serial policy paper that anybody can read. They show up to the party headquarters to hold press. They show up to the party headquarters to hold press. To, to, to issue press release. On a working Monday, too, I'm like, on Monday, yeah, like... the web parent on Monday at the prime time, two, three in the day, prime time of the day. That's when your email box alone is full. A serious minister, your email box alone is full. That's when they show up to party. Exactly. Two, two, three, yeah. prime time. When I when I work when I work for government as as as, as a senior economist, as a senior economist, we are leaving work 10, 11 p.m. We are leaving work 10, 11 p.m. When what we're doing, we're basically you're working on national budget, you're working on, 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 on you're looking at, at fiscal policy regimes, you're developing different regression analysis and models to be able to, 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 to make projections for government revenue. You're looking for revenue sources. You get the time to be on Facebook to take picture 24 7 and just turn your ministry into a photo studio. When we hired Samuel to the first job we gave was to count cars on, 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 on Rail Road, to count how many cars would plow that road because we wanted to put a toll booth there. Because the reason why we didn't put toll road there was because they, 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 if, you, if you look at the trend on the road, how many cars were passing, it was useless to put a toll road, but that was the first assignment we gave to it. 
Stevie. You know, let me. I will, I will. You know, it gets frustrating when you Stevie, talk about like period. People, you know, you have this conversation oh, yeah, yeah, because no, you I want people don't understand most of the things they say when they argue about Monrovia. I always tell them, don't use the CDC as a yardstick to measure any serious government performance. These guys' government is a special arrangement. This is not a government. This is the only government I went to ministries where no one go to work. I'm on, I was in Monrovia the other time. These guys don't go to work. I'm Absolutely I'm nothing is happening finance. to this ministry. I'm I'm the ministry. I challenge them. Look I'm at their the offices. Finance. I see people leaving at 2 p.m. Nothing is happening there. I'm not lying to you. I was in Monrovia. Ask any of them. Ask any librarian yet before your Wednesday show. Let them visit two or three different ministries. Let them call you on Wednesday. Nothing is going on to those ministries. That is why they have all the free time to go to the party and go to the house press conferences. But you think you think you can develop Liberia with all your talents? How? Explain to me. You 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 you, you come to America to 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 do UNGA, then you get people to wear Barrett. You wouldn't consider about CDC who wear Barrett. That the only people you can talk to. If you were smart. The diaspora Liberian represent the, the middle class that is missing in Liberia. If 50,000 diaspora Liberian can put $1,000 together, $50 million right there, you know what you can do? And, 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 and 50,000 Liberian in America can afford $1,000 a year. If they put that money in, you know what you're talking? You're talking about almost $50 million. So your capacity to, to rebrand your country, to build your country is ready in America. But then when you come to America, you only concern about meeting seditions, many of whom don't even have any ready thing to offer the country, but just go there and celebrate you. When you say moreover, look at Miami, then they clap. Stevie, $50 million is what Liberia needs to begin to mine the Wologizi Mountain. $50 million PR. With $50 million, we can mine the Wologizi Mountain. That means we mine our mountain, ourselves, we sell our iron ore, we can decide whether we want to establish a factory. 50 million US dollars. That's what we need. Exactly. Group economics. Group economics. But you see, you people can put together. See, they can I, I'm taking time money. talking about like business some days. It, just, it gets to the point where it's like you're talking to people who don't even have the desire to listen to what you're saying first and foremost. So again, folks, like I tell you guys all the time, these elections are coming. If you think that it's, about, it's an opportunity to get new t-shirt and eat free food, take it. Go get t-shirts. Don't look at your life and make decisions. Talk about, I think the opposition are kind of together. And you know, I think they were the, we yeah, going to yeah, run out and they never not know, Do it. Know, we are a win because opposition can't together. Who told you that? Who told you? Where in the world you see opposition come together? Who told you, have you, a, you have a multi-party democratic system. You have a multi-party democracy. So what are you talking about? Everybody should have their political party. In America, you have to get over 3,400 political parties. You don't see that come together? But what they will do when they, when they tie up with Democrats, they vote Republican. When they tie up with Republican, they vote Democrats. They get Tea Party. They get Liberty Party. They get all the different parties in America here. Yeah. The Libertarian Party. All the people, yeah, who told you they have a political party? Yeah, you see they come together to vote. But when you when you when you want to find an excuse, when you want to find an excuse why you shouldn't vote, then you call and say your opposition need to come come together to do what? The people yeah. want together, other people start fingering documents. It is it is the church other people mentality. Start disrespecting other people can't come to meetings. It is the church mentality. Tell the librarian someone is responsible for their misfortune. And then yeah, they buy so the job, we that is the their excuse. What, what, what opposition needs to come together for you to vote for Baka ahead of Joe? So, why you, so <laughs> how many other options do you have? Vote for who you want. Oh, of course, based on the analytics out there, we know that the election will go to the runoff. We know this. So that because based on the fact that the way they 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 the vote the votes are you know compartmentalized. You will also you will look at using historical data. You will, you 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 should say that the election is most likely to go to a runoff, right? Now, mind you, the reason we could have said that before was because we didn't have any measuring role of the CDC. The CDC was just a a a a, a, a political party making loud mouth about governance. So she will get thirty percent, thirty two percent in the last three elections, right? 2005, 2011, and 2017. Now, the fact that the CDC has been given power, she has failed to deliver 
In any serious country, citizens should not even get 10% of the new vote coming up. The vote should be zero. The vote didn't do anything. CDC is a complete failure. But you know, guys, let's let go to the line, you know. Um, yeah, you have to take a few calls before I get, <laughs> before we get going. Let, yeah, let yeah. Uh, uh, so, you know, my people, y'all who want to participate on the show, <laughs> you, can, you can call. Uh, we only have one number to the unfortunate day. We will get Tanya on the call to, to, to take local, local number. We couldn't get a local number, you know. Uh, uh, so the number to call is 401-688-8266. Uh, you can call and participate on the show uh, 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 so that uh, we can all, you know, talk about Liberia. You know, and George, so until we get a call, you know, we can still be having this Steven, conversation. Steven, you said something. Now that CDC was given the opportunity to perform, which they performed terribly, they failed miserably. Any sound like being... Look, Steven... I still stand by my statement. Any Liberian, rational Liberian, who goes to the ballot box on October 10th, 2023, to even look at the CDC candidate or consider the CDC to say they can lead the country again, you need to see a doctor. Okay, no, we, we have our first caller on the line, so let's take the caller. Caller, go ahead and make your point. Uh, my brother George, Global, how you doing? This is Jerry Dooley. I'm calling from Worcester, Mass. I'm doing great. Uh, the chairman. Brother George, you guys are playing your serious part into the into our country. But everything is into our people in here. You're going to be going through the screening. You're just playing your part. At the hour, you will be pushing your late hour to end your resources and take care of your family. But because the law of Liberia, they say, why you are on the show? Oh, today I try following the economic freedom fighter. The thing our people take me to be a joke. The election commission, the entire board is a damn ball hanging on our country. Right now, our people need to put in zero effort and make sure they don't need the election commission. The entire thing we need them. The people serve as a time bond to us, 20, 20 people they are overlooking it. It's a serious issue. Okay, sir. The, the country man tell you, say, the crazy man say, I'm showing you the storm already in that man here. So our people taking the thing to be a joke. It's a serious issue. We need to look into it. Thank you for the time. Uh, next caller, go Next caller, go ahead. Hi. Thank you for the for the show. My name is Thomas. I'm calling from North Carolina. Thomas, Just up. one point I want to, to make. I did hear from Stephen that <clears throat> GMB will be coming on the show. I think either this on the maybe in the on next the uh, nineteen. Weeks. On the nineteen. On the nineteen. One appeal I want to make, and this is not something perhaps you guys can bear me witness whether it has been practiced in Liberia. Well, I don't think this is something that has been practiced a lot. When these politicians are running, it's good for us to know the team that is crafting their manifesto. I followed the recent election in Kenya quite recently, and the two contenders put their teams together. You could see that they were drawing from universities, from research institutes, and they are putting the best economists in the country, the best political scientists, the best sociologists, mm -hmm to be able to develop their manifesto. That brings credibility to a team. So I think that's one thing that we want to put to him. He has a team that is working on it. If he can announce that team, in addition to just announcing campaign teams, if we can know who are the people who are drafting these manifestos, he lend credibility to those so, 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 so I, I was I was I was one of those who were who who was um who were, who was selected to form part of that team to draft the the agenda for the for the party and based on the list of uh, other people uh, uh, that was on that team they 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 at, yeah there was a cross section of people from different academic background now um. The, you know, because of the way our politics is in Liberia, how people are targeted because of the the role they play in 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 in, in, in the in the current government arrangement. So a lot of people they okay. didn't want that list to be published. Okay. 
Yeah, yeah but, but I can tell you. If GMB comes on the show on the 19th, if that is an issue of concern to you, you still have the yeah. same way. But I can say right? that this was, was made out of academicians, technicians, and people with the, with the hands on expertise in different areas that we cover. So we cover all the different thematic areas based on people. People were assigned based on their expertise. Okay. All right, brother. Thank you. Pierre, you got a number? You got to call me. You mute out if you if you got called. Well, I'm about to back to back call, but I call out stay a long time the line when you are holding on, so we have to wait until call out come in. Um, uh, so, uh, Stephen, while we are waiting a uh, uh, call here, I wanted to bring something to you guys' attention. Maybe for if I'm not here on Wednesday, uh, the. The Custom Broker Association said something the other day, and I wrote this down. Uh, he argued that the ship that brought that drugs that was arrested, that it was giving preferential treatment, and that All right, let, let, let's go on the line. Let, 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 go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Hello. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you. My name is Melvin M. Robert from La Bureau of Call in the U.S. Especially, I came from the country of West Point. My brother, we as Liberia, we need to do well. Because then we sit and we, and we do not talk to our people. La Bro, we can I I get from, from La Bro, I mean, it's just two good money. Yeah. One person, we are well West Point with the aspiration that the people of West Point have for him concerning the coast of defense, the maritime world. The previous speaker spoke. But when the president came, he started talking, I play football, he had cross, no cross, private, and he did that thing. The court was going to hear, wanted to hear. So if, if our people will sit there again and say, President, we have to go back the train, I think our country will go down the train. Thank you. All right. So let me tell you, you can go by the same number on the screen, the WhatsApp number, the same number. Okay. number. Yeah, you muted. If you got called, you muted. Call out with uh, uh, four four. Are you there? I'm here. I'm here. Yeah, go ahead. Make your point. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you guys for the show. Uh, I always follow Clark. You know that. I think you guys have been uh, preparing to our country. Your name and where are you calling from? Uh, I... Okay. Um, Musa calling for UK. Yeah, Musa, go ahead. I thank you guys for the show. I think uh, you guys we know that it's, it's a good opportunity for all of us to speak to our people back home. But you know, Mr. Kuya, let me tell you that the problem that we got, there's no way, there's no way some 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 person will move over just we are any longer. Joshua is done and done forever. And you see our people say that we love it, they don't care whatsoever I've been doing, they just say that. Because of us, those, those are all I live uh, overseas, we give to we send them money every month. They receive their token from us. We need to tell the people the truth. If they make mistake, they put down their back. God forbid, God forbid, God forbid. We put sanction on the people in the area so they can less sense. And I brought forward, we need to put session on that. We need to target them with session. No money sent to Liberia. This campaign, we need to study. Because if people here, they're not learning. It, it seems to be like, you know, we need to be sense in their head. What I love is this. John, we are going to play the president and say, everybody, they say, they say, oh, 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 they
Let's call on the line from New York. Go ahead. Um, I heard uh, the host talking about recruiting and you know, those scatterers of brain, but <clears throat> uh, then on so many occasions in Liberia, we recruit people from the diaspora that you know went to school, how they educated or how to school, and they, they haven't been working in an area of discipline, and we take them to Liberia, some of them they don't perform. So in recruiting, you should look at experience. It should be the first thing that you look at. Not because a man has a graduate degree, so he or she be recruited, but she, you, you should look at experience amongst. Okay. Thank you. Good point. Thank you. You know the man says to me, man say you have a plenty of degree there, you have plenty of degree there, but not get a degree there. Well, we just do. You got to get people with hands up with the qualification and experience. Absolutely, we are unique experience. Man but the, but the, 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 the but the reality also is 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 the 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 the, the job market in America here offers anybody the opportunity to get hands on experience. Yeah, you take you take training. Yeah, you, you, everybody before you, you take training everything. You muted, Pia. Call from Minnesota. Call from Minnesota. Yes, call from Minnesota. Make your point. Make your point. Great. Uh, yes, so my point here is that um, you your, see, your name, your name. I'm, I'm David from Minneapolis. Okay, go ahead, David. Yeah, so that drug problem is, is, is just getting worse every day. You see, um, our people in Liberia. You see most of them crying today. They are the one that brought this problem. You see people working in this government, they, they will go to work and complain that they, they, they pay them for like, like they are not leave them for like four or five months. But they still go there and they'll call you. Oh, can you send me a little thing? And they, have, they haven't paid us yet. So if somebody has not paid you, yeah. so you're not fit to work. Are you kidding me? Yeah. And throw a little bit light on our mysterious killing in Liberia. Once I will start with our St. Moses. Go on there, carry all the all people that died from there, and carry them to St. Moses. But see, uh, 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 for uh, three amazing boys or uh, 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 got, got killed. Well, uh, let me let me. Oh, I, I lost saying, but there's a call of oh, all. Call to uh, wow. All right, somebody else from many hours for this. Is it the same call out because you lost out? Yes. Okay. No, go, go ahead. Call up from Minnesota, right? Yeah. Uh, my name is Michael Harris, and I call from Minnesota. Okay. I just want to say thank you to you guys for your contribution for the better of our country. Now, I'd just like to quickly talk on the issue of this Syria Island. Like I still don't know you guys regularly say, if, if like we any kind of serious minor country, and this is not no disrespect to our country though, yeah. Yeah, who, who people are coming for the high and why in public office, the like of Syria Island will not be going from place to place, making itself like an intellectual yeah, in this country. Uh, you guys know very well, this very man called Syria Island, there was someone who served as chairman of the NPP. He had the girls who went to the national legislature at the time, called for Liberia like, withdraw for the United Nations on grounds that there were international conspiracy against his government. Mm. He did not want really to stop there. He went from when they had the, the, the civil conflict, when law, murder, war, he went at a university of Liberia campus. He called for university students to be conscripted into yeah, the army to fight the rebel forces. Yeah, and that brought, it down, that brought huge criticism, even the civil society, everybody, the religious community, they condemned that. Yeah. So this may cannot be, I mean, Anybody serious, but again, like you guys said, some platform accommodation because he says what they want to hear. Some of the very platform that I highlight this year, I'll see how they draw their panelists. Some of the very panelists have okay, increased, of course, and taking 45,000 of the new pay, but yet he got them there with a lot of people for corruption. So, I mean, it's just it, 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 it's like you, and the thing goes for people like you. Platform they apply you loaded like the guys who will kind of bring fight to the, to the to the discussion and form our people rightfully. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Thank you, Michael. Uh, caller from Liberia, go ahead and make your point. I thank you so very kind. Uh, it is Stephen Yaman Bena, and I come in tonight from um, Salah District, Bon County. Stephen, that is a regular call. Yeah, 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 Stephen called regularly. Yeah. Go ahead, make your point quickly. Okay, let me see. I want to thank you for, you for the deliberation tonight, and I always follow in the show. I really admire you people, and I think that with all of these different healthy discussion. Liberia will be getting somewhere very soon. And uh, for, for a while, other people have been saying Liberia actually, uh, we, are, we are feeding by in Liberia and our kids visualizing our hand and their country depend on the younger one. But as, as they stay right now, the whole country is actually going into the oblivion on the leadership of uh, his residency, George Man, and we are, and we are very hopeful that uh, the Liberian people we all can think and come together collectively and and defeat President. We are democratically come 2023, and I am really really thankful to God that uh, Ambassador Joseph Newman and some of the people that we really been talking about the issue of uh, farm to market role, the issue of. Uh, Tourism, uh, Ambassador Joseph Newman Boca can actually be talking about that, and we are we are hopeful. I'm, I'm of the strongest conviction that when you take over this nation, you're going to do pretty good well into the agriculture and the tourism sector, and even the 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 money and the energy sector, because we think that you're going to develop our country greatly. Thank you so very much. All right, thank you. The next caller, I think from Minnesota, go ahead. Yeah, so PR, yeah, yeah, I, I, I love my place there. So, um, so as I was saying, of oh, oh, see, Moses, who was accused of uh carrying these kids to, I mean, carrying these boys to work for him, is still passing free in Liberia just to show that Liberian people are not serious. But now, see, Moses, uh, 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 it's not even supposed to be operating a funeral home. Okay? Yeah. That's my point. I know maybe I deviated a little bit. No, that's all right. 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 People making that you're on a training issue. That's all right. Okay. I think we have another caller from Liberia. Caller, go ahead. Hello? Go ahead. You're on the line. Okay. My name is P. I call from Pinsville. Okay. Oh, really, I, I want to stress of two things. The first thing, uh, my brothers and sisters in the United States, uh, sanction does not go in one direction. Why America is taking sanction on our corrupt position? I'm also asking you people to also take have a sanction for your own people in Liberia. <laughs> I say this, why? Because if you are in America and you are sending money for somebody and the person, if the person is supporting you, President Weir, you will know, you will see from, you can build like rural media every day, you will know on their thoughts, on their action, you will know. So automatically, we should stop talking to, we should stop talking to them or stop spending the money, policy and tell them in as much as you support President Weir, I am not going to say you this. Or you guys should also caution your people, tell them that I'm here, I'm responsible, so I'm for the family there. So I'm urging the family to support SYC. That's another way to win their heart. Thank That's you. number one. Number, number two, to the issue of uh, 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 Chief Allen, I think the war talks is associated with C. Allen. Why does say that? You are a state, you are one of the officials for the state, one of the elders in the state. If indeed you are a terror and your chairman having a problem, you have not intervened, according to our witness, they are listening carefully on the interview with Spoon FM, he said that he went and met Joao Tiro. Previously, you have heard a tip from Joao Tiro saying that uh, she was going to disrupt the, the uh, convention and this one. Did you ever make an attempt to bring the, the, uh, the, uh, the party chairman and Dali or, or Joao Tiro together and discuss with them? No, you didn't do it. After the convention, when you have been disrupted, he said, are you waiting to meet Joao Tiro? You didn't do it. But he said you went to call Joao The question is, I guess Joao telling him that uh, your bar president disrupted uh, this, this convention. It's not the goal of a leader. 
I mean, he's tossing into the Liberian politics. He should not be given any credit at this time. Thank you very much. Thank you. We allow you to roll longer because you're calling from Liberia and getting your eyes a It's a how. Uh, calling from Liberia. Let's call her. Go ahead. Thank you. My name is DJ Lumet calling from Cowell. Let me say hi to the panelists, Steven and Lugo and the Ella itself that are on the, on the radio now. Uh, Mr. Pia, let me say thank you. Look, Liberia, we just have to be serious. Mr. Pia won't have a problem within the election, and the Liberian people are not looking at it. It's in the election commission. Now, what happened? With the, with the MPP the last time. That's the reason why I never supported them when they said they were going to join the CDC. Now, election commission, because the last time she gave six, because of her way. Now, Vice President Joao Tiro has set up a team from over there during her primary election when she had her own thing in her you know, shot. And she had named the people as the, 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 the chairman and other people. She went to take that name to the election commission. And the election commission will work with that identity. The same thing that Musa is doing to the Liberty Party. We go into crisis once more, and the people are now looking at this thing. The definition from our relative year is far. It's now far. When the election, when the election commission begins to play the kind of and uh, gains on the Liberian people, there will be trouble, as many trouble somewhere. Liberians were not able to run from here again. We got our children, we got our family. The election commission, the king that they play along with the president is not good for the Liberian people. We just talking on this thing on the address, oh, this and that, this and that. But the election commission got serious problems. And I think this is the time now for all to stand as a Liberian, for all to go to guide to crisis tomorrow to start running around here. What the election commission is doing, she's not even qualified to run the election here. So so the library people should put themselves together and put their eyes together and see how best we can read the international community because they're the ones spending their money, but they will not intrude into our problem. We have ourselves. We have to we have to we have to take that challenge, meet the challenge. All right, right. DJ Lamar, your points. Yeah. I know where to run. I got my family here. Okay. They are saying nobody they can threaten me. I don't be threatened by anybody. Ah. DJ Lamar, you have made your point. Uh call up from Raw Allen go ahead. <laughs> Hey, Kola, you got radio playing behind you. You got to call it if you want to participate on the show. Hello? Yes. I'm a Yeah, but you have heavy music playing behind you, but it's okay. No, I'm, I'm too sorry. Yeah, this is Papa Pop of Rhode Island. Make your point. Yeah, uh, uh, quickly, uh, I listen to you, but I uh, thank you guys for the spinning job that you're doing and for sending one to me, uh, to you, and it's there. And, and, to get this to the point, I think the guys that were school TV need to be expert to manage that too. We were very arrogant yesterday on the lady and our in like you know, in the other time. The thing that I think when you start condemning people that were trying to make a change, and why you are talking about internet, you go like Liberia, you feel bad on Liberia for sending internet. The internet is very bad. So you go all out there, they get for how the how the phone will progress. So thank you guys, uh Stevie, Pi and all the other problems when they put. Good job, and we'll be in contact with you. We'll be in to, to support that there can be a peaceful transition of power in Nigeria. Thank you guys very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We will take uh, one or two more because I think Josh. Yeah, yeah. George is messaging that. Uh, <laughs> Pia, don't put me on the blog, man. You see that thing on the Pia. I'll, I'll, I'll put you know the draft comes on in a little bit again. Yeah, you know the draft comes on again. I'll yeah, yeah, again. I agree, but I'll put you. Easy. You've been putting me all kind of fire to this, Stevie. Let me tell you before the show, and now you're doing the show. Yeah, <laughs> the people in LeBron know what's happening. There's no way we should be talking run up. I mean, Stevie, I can't. No, I just can't okay, let's take, let take this call out from Ohio or whatever. Call up from Ohio or so. Go ahead. Hello, uh, I'm Prince as well. Calling from Columbus, Ohio. Okay. Uh, I want to commend the panelists in the studio for job well done. I really appreciate you guys. We need to educate our people back home. Right now, it's time for Liberia to move forward. Most especially the youth. They need to be talked to so that we can make sure our country moves forward from this 
evil doers that will be in the country that are in the country right now. So thank you guys. You know, wish you long life and prosperity. All thank right. You, sir. Thank you, Paul. Okay, Steven, I think we can end it there. All right. Okay. Um, yeah. I know you be here. Maybe you'll come back in, in, in 10 seconds. <laughs> yeah, I I, I, I'm taking, I'm taking, I'm seriously taking George, who is making a huge sacrifice into consideration. So let uh, me see. I tell you, I tell you, oh man, uh, 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 George Numo. Well, yeah, well, but if, if, if I Numo call, I would definitely take him. <laughs> <laughs> the, the guy is almost the namesake of George Lobo. But he's yeah, like, I'm, George, I'm George Lobo. I was yeah, sure when he called that day. George Lobo. Yeah, <laughs> George Lobo in Philadelphia. I always call him. He's always the last caller. Yeah. yeah we have consideration for him. So if you watch it from there, you can call. So we can, <laughs> so we can hear for you. I let you have PR pronouncing your thing. Uh, but I saw Pa Zawe also in the in the comment section earlier. Pa Mongo Zawe. Pa Zawe, you know, uh, you need a fun time to come on. Um, so we can all talk and talk about Liberia. I, I usually follow your your podcast. I see that uh, you you're passionate about your country. You 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 offer you know you offer a lot to bring a lot to the table. Your understanding about our politics, our governance, and and just the anthrop the social anthropology about Liberians in general is not worth it. And so, um, if you can find time, Pazawe, uh, you know we can bring you on. here. just reach out to me. Can bring you on to share your your perspective about Liberia, uh, um, you know, because this is this is this is the only country we have, you know. We we um we are passionate about Liberia. We we don't hate any particular government. We don't hate any particular individual. We just love our country more. We come here every day. We we, we sacrifice. We talk to Liberians. It's because we want a better country. We want a country for our children and our children's children. So that we can all be part of Liberia. I don't think any of us here will be happy or will, will, will be mad. Let me put it this way. Any of us here will be mad if we are was doing the right thing. If 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 we are was was ensuring that this country is on the right path towards prosperity, nobody here will be here criticizing him. We will all be celebrating him. Because the thing is, is is leadership is like a stage performance. You come on, you perform, or you don't perform. If you perform, we clap for you. If you don't perform, we boo you and you out. And so we are is on the stage. He's not performing. All we do is just booing him. And and, and this is why we need a, a more experienced, responsible leadership that will take over um, in twenty twenty three. And 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 we believe that Joseph Baga brings that experience, the uh, the understanding about governance, but most importantly, the integrity. Because one of the things that has been lacking in our public bureaucracy is the issue of having people, public servants that have the integrity. Many of our people don't have integrity. And, and the way we measure integrity is not because you didn't serve government. Then it means you have integrity. No, we measure integrity based on how much year you serve government and what did you do there. Now, if you serve government in a society like Liberia, where corruption is at the pinnacle of our national politics and move out of there without any trace of corruption on you, that is the greatest form of measurement of anybody, anybody's integrity. Now, where you now when you work all your life in different country where you know that the incentive to steal will cause you trouble, you will go to jail. <laughs> so you know that doing so is wrong. In Liberia, most of the time, most of our public officials who steal government money, they, they just pass around. Now, if you can work in that kind of system and refuse to steal, I respect you any day. I respect you any day than somebody who spent 50 years in America working in a corporate environment, working in an organized system where you know that if you steal, yeah, you're in serious trouble. So, Joe, let me hear from you. You know, your closing statement. Uh, if you want to talk about some of the issues the caller talk about, uh, uh, you can talk about it. And, 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 and the NPR will, will follow with its closing. Let me say thanks to the callers. Uh, what I always try to do before I leave to provide some sort of advice for you folks. There are many librarians, some of you are aware of today, based on President, we are good economic policy. Some of you, your lives have improved. Absolutely. We wish you guys all the best. And let me say to those of you, if the CDC five years has improved your living condition, don't be ungrateful. I always say to you, do the right thing. But to the many of you 
who every day now we hear you crying. Back in the days, you used to ask people in America for two, three hundred. This time, you have reduced it so drastically to only ten, fifteen, twenty dollars just to get by for the next day. That is not a life for you. Let me be very clear with you. You can never be independent and be financially stable by someone providing you handouts. No amount of financial aid from America will make you independent. You are only independent if you can work and earn income on your own. That is why some of us have argued that President We are will never be able to lift anyone out of poverty because to lift people out of poverty, you must create the opportunity for them to work and earn income. Sadly for us, he has yet to attract any foreign direct investment. He has yet to create 5,000 new jobs in any sector across the country. All we've heard from this government has been nothing but promises. Our government is looking into, our government is considering doing, our government is thinking of doing, our government will soon be doing. What that means is for the past five years, this government has done absolutely nothing. Many of you today, you complain about your children's school fees. Many of you can barely get by. Some of you were independent in the neighborhoods you live. Some of you people came to your doorsteps to beg for a cup of rice. Today, you yourself, now you are not a beggar. That is a clear understanding of what life has become in Liberia. We don't say these things because we really want to see people suffer. I recall back in the days during the early 12 years presidency, I never went to Liberia. I've been very clear on the record. But I recall ordinary Liberians would call you, Stevie, and say, I got 3000 I'm making. Can you find me one old Toyota down there? Yeah. Now they don't call you to tell you they want you buying anything. No, nobody they can. They call you for, for money to buy rights. This time they call you to say, can you help me so my child can go to school? Folks, this is not politics. The CDC understanding of propaganda is the more lies you can tell. That's not what I think. Propaganda should be based on your <clears throat> government's performance. It should be based on the achievement and accomplishment of your party. You inherited a national budget of 526 million. Sadly for us, President Weir cannot boast of any serious capital investment. One that have created over 10,000 jobs over five years, folks. This is an embarrassment to the country. Not only that he has a, not only that he can't deliver, his government has diminished Liberia's image that the Unity Party government worked so hard to build. Imagine the former vice president traveling. He took over 40 trips, Stevie. Many Liberians don't know. 40 international trips traveling across the Asian Pacific, from Singapore to Beijing, from Beijing, all over the place, seeking assistance in the national agreements to help Liberia get out of the mess we inherited. You know, when the CDC said they inherited a mess, I asked them, if you inherited over 150 megawatts of power capability, you inherited a national reserve of over $154.8 million. You inherited a national budget of over $526 million. You inherited civil servant making over $150. Folks, if that was a mess, then let us be honest, what did the Unity Party inherit? That in itself means we inherited there was no country. Folks, we can go on and on. But you bear the greatest responsibility. The decision for your future. I always say to you, the decision for where you want to see yourself in the next five years. There can never be a better tomorrow without a good today. You must start to think now. You must outline your own path to success. And that begins by electing a credible, honest, dedicated, committed leader. It is unfortunate that public service in Liberia has a different definition. All throughout my days in school, I was taught that public services were experienced, competent, qualified, dedicated professionals come to give back to their country. Under the CDC is where incompetent hooligans, thieves, rogues come to take away from the country. Unprofessionals. Folks, this is not a joke. This is serious business. Vote like you've never voted before. Because many countries, if you think they are scaling back, helping you now, they're only waiting for the final straw. The last nail you put in your coffin. That's what they want to see. 
if you people the ambassador statement folks i want you people play the ambassador's statement understand it for yourself he said we've done our part it is in your hands you have a chance folks vote like you've never voted before pr steven i want to thank the class reloaded i want to thank those scholars who call every one of you have your own personal problem but again we'll do what we can do we'll continue to be here and make the sacrifices my man it was an opportunity i could never miss i want to say thank you very much i'm grateful to share the platform with the two great men former government officials i'm proud <laughs> thank you very much man thank you guys thank you george Layer, layer for pia i wouldn't say anything long in closing to this trench line. yeah we've sent this message over and over and over and over and over again and i just want to borrow from from george we're exactly a year away from election day if your way of finding who can better run the country was only if parties come together and have one ticket then that's the reason why we keep making the same mistake over and over because that is not how you find leader you find leaders by assessing individual on a personal turn so you have now the opportunity to have we are sitting here evaluating the Cummings here evaluating Boaka here evaluating Bongo here evaluating anybody else who can evaluate them and go to the pool exactly one year from now based on the the result of the evaluation and vote for their future. You can choose to keep Mr. Weir and continue what you have seen of his leadership in the past five years for plus more. Because you see, I say plus more because in this first term, Mr. Weir wanted a second term. That, that's, that's, that's something that I just known to people when they come to power. You know they would need a second term. If a man needed a second term and he didn't care, and ran the country as recklessly as he did. Imagine what they would do if nothing called second term is on the table. That decision is for you to make. If you have evaluated and realized coming is a guy, good day. If you evaluated and realized that there's one person in the midst, like Joe Biden, who stayed in government for years, but yet meeting a clean repetition. But yes, stands out with his credibility. Yes, stands out with integrity. Yes, stands out to be a man of transparency. Yes, stands out to be the man who, among all of the actors, understands the issue so well and has the know how that we yearn for. Then the choice is yours. So join us in our quest to have JMB, Joseph Nima Mbuakai, elected as president of our country after witnessing this last five years that I can consider as disastrous and catastrophic. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you, George. We committed to this. We're in this together. The gloves are out. We keep punching. We'll not get discouraged. We keep fighting because there's light at the end of the tunnel. Thank you, Pia. Thank you, Thank you, Thank you, Pia. Thank you, John. Let, before we close, let me announce that uh, JMB will be uh, a guest on the class reloaded uh, on Wednesday, October 19. That's next week, Wednesday, October 19. Uh, our guest will be uh, His Excellency, uh, Vice, former Vice President Joseph Yuman Buaka. He will be a guest on the platform. So all of you are encouraged to uh, tune in and uh, and listening to your part, join the conversation next Wednesday. Um, uh, guys, I wouldn't talk, I wouldn't give any closing arguments today. You guys have already said uh, everything. I, I was just um, add my voice and say that uh, Liberians, the choice is yours. Um, you have to either choose between going backward in more reverse and moving the country forward. The, 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 the decision is, is easy. This is one of the easiest elections ever in, in Liberia's history because you have a government very irresponsible, reckless, and you have a, a, an opposition vice, an opposition stand-up bearer who has the integrity, who has clearly articulated his vision to move the country forward. <laughs> this should be this should be water under the bridge. This should be like taking candy from a baby. You know? So this is not like you in an election where you have 
five to ten different serious candidates. And the incumbent is, is also strong. They deliver on their premises. The country is booming. We have jobs, people, people, the light and water system, everything running effectively, companies operating, you know, young people get jobs. Our youth are, are, are employed, whether it's in factory, whether it's in manufacturing firms, whether it's small scale businesses open, librarian people who run in their small scale business, making profit overnight, bars, nightclub, restaurant, rice in the country, people standing, you know, people eating 10 cups of rice instead of five. They feel everybody enjoy. This is not the case. So this election should be a very simple election. This election should be like taking a candy from a baby. You, 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 you have essentially the option to choose between a reckless gambler in Wea and a progressive leader in Buaka who intends to move the country into, you know, into, into prosperity. So on that note, we'd like to thank our, our radio stations, uh, Radio Bushwa, Radio FM 98.1, uh, Shaka FM 102.5 in Montserrado, both of them. Uh, Radio Tupa, all the way there in Grand Paso, um, and, 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 and and let me say, Radio Tupa, um, once I'm in Monrovia, I will, will, will try to come up there. I, I, I'm from Grand Paso myself, even though I can't speak the dialect, but I'm, <laughs> I'm from Grand Paso. Um, we'll come up there, and, and I hope when Josh, all of us in town together, we'll make some tours of this radio station Absolutely. so that we can we can talk to, to our people directly I and get to speak see fluent, most of our people there in Paso. Uh, and also in Vonjima, Voice of Lofa 99.3, we will we will make a stop there. Uh, Radio Joy Africa in Makibi 97.5, Voice of Gompa, Nima. I, 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 it's one of the places in Liberia, um, besides Monrovia, Paso, is one of my town home is Nima County. I used to spend most of my time up there in, in Ganta, Saklipi, Lugatu, Butu, uh, 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 Play, you know, all, all, all those places were places that I. Uh, to, then in Sino County, you know, I've been to Buto, I've been to uh, Greenville, I've been to most of the, the districts in Greenville. My man, are your job. Yeah. So, yeah, it's guys, like the we'll agriculture there. minister telling you how many farms he visited, yeah. man. <laughs> so, guys, we'll, we'll be there. Let's say, before we go, let's announce here that JMB will be a special mm. guest on the class reloaded on next week, Wednesday. That's October 19, 2022. Um, you all are encouraged to attend. And come here with your pen, a pen and copy book, so that you can take notes. Uh, class will be on fire that day. Uh, the big, the one of the big students will be here. Just a bag will be here. My people will be in in, in the class. So y'all who listening in like bro across the country, y'all y'all must count on y'all listen to him, so he can tell you the thing he will do for the country. Because they play the country arena, he ha, he ha. You need somebody now who get the experience to. Somebody who understand government to to move the country in the direction that you want it to go, or else we'll be going behind, we'll be going behind, we'll be going behind, we'll get tired. Your children will not even get money to go to school, you're not even get money to send your children to school, they will suffer. So, if you want and all of that thing, you got to put somebody there who gets experience. That's why, even in the interior, when they're looking for, for, for wise people in the town to make decisions, they don't go look for children, they don't go for the elders. We are going low in the interior until they add on them because they don't want to make the decision. They don't want to think straight. So why we can't get if you can't get small boy be man job. He will, he will be dancing music. He will be you'll be passing around chasing women all the thing. They ain't get time to focus. So we gotta get man job to men. That's why we support him. Boy, so my people, we thank you. You're in the interior. We thank you. Your 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 get ready. We we'll, we'll, registration will start in December so you can participate. So we can all go back, go in next year, October, and vote the men and vote the people also, so that we can put our country on the right path. Guys, thanks for coming, George. Thanks to all of our folks in the comment section. Thank you, guys. Um, I'll see you people on the drive. I see my Thank papi you. pa Zawi. I see my my own uh, big brother uh, Cornelius Hunter. Uh, I see Cyril Cyril Way, and uh, I see uh, Israel um, Israel Roosevelt. All of you guys, thanks for joining us. Um, we hope to see you back again with us on Wednesday. And, and 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 Friday. Pia, have a good evening. I'll call you after we leave from here. Yeah, yeah. Very easy. Yeah. 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 My 
Amen the people, my fellow people, let the papa ya on photo. Mama did the people, my grand people, my dad people, let the papa ya on. My group people, my funny people, my bad people, let the papa ya on. My dead people, my bola people, my lover people, let the papa ya on. It's Benji. Everybody, hands up. Shadow in the air. Now come on out. One, two, two. Let's go. The paper is coming up. The paper is coming up. The mommy is coming up. The mommy is coming up. The mommy is coming up. The paper is coming up. The mommy is coming up. Liberians, register to vote for the 2023 general and presidential elections. Registration starts December 15, 2022 and ends March 17, 2023. Your vote is your voice. Be heard. Vote as if your life depends on it because it does. You have the power. Use it. Register to vote. Play your part. A message. From the class reloaded with sponsorship from Africa Media. In Liberia, November 1944, a public spirited person was born. Joseph Numa Wakai from Wasanga, Foya District, Lofa County. He is a role model. He's actually my inspiration. He's also a uh, perfect example of humility. He's a very humble person. Through that papi, the happy start giving all from this swap here. I know that when he get there, he will help me. He will help the nation. In Liberia, the Ven